World number one, Valderon de Oliveira, knew he couldn't sit on the sidelines any longer. He returns only two weeks after being brutally driven into the dirt with hopes of protecting his lead. While J.B. Mooney's miraculous return from injury has already produced dividends, but Mooney knows more is needed to keep him in the hunt for the gold buckle. Previously on the PBR 1515 Bucking Battle, the top 15 bow riders in the world face the top 15 bovine athletes in the cowboy country of Billings, Montana. J.B. Mooney continued his attempt at this unique sports challenge, riding with the opposite hand at bull riding's highest level. Look at that! His first qualified ride as a right-hander. His miracle ride defied the odds against one of the PBR's toughest bulls. World number one, Valderon de Oliveira, did not compete after being stepped on a week before. Oh, boy. He returns today and 2008 world champion Guilherme Marchi gave the gallery a ride to remember, clenching his first ever 15-15 title. This bull hasn't been ridden in over a year. The season standings have been left wide open here in the fields of Idaho. It's the sixth round for the top 15 Cowboys on Earth against the top 15 bulls, where extreme is an understatement, and history is only eight seconds away. Just outside Idaho's capital, the Cowboys have converged to test their medal and, if possible, make a move in the standings as the PBR's spring swing is almost at an end. It's been two years since the Riders and Bulls convened inside the Idaho Center. The last time we were here, Silvano Alves won in his first ever event. We welcome you once again to the PBR's 15-15 bucking battle. Double the points, double the intensity, and double the adrenaline. Time to bring you inside the PBR's Built for Tough Skybox. And once again, alongside nine-time world champion Ty Murray, I'm bringing over Ty. We need to give the Valderon situation the gravity it deserves. This was not a simple wreck. You go back a couple weeks ago in Connecticut, scary moments to see our world number one not only driven into the dirt, but laying there motionless for minutes. The good news, fast forward two weeks later, Valderon is not only back, but he's back on a mission. Craig, I think that shows, I mean, you can't make this sport safe. It, you know, that was as bad a wreck as you're going to see, and he's got a fractured eye socket from it. And we can't forget, before that, he had a broken foot, so he's dealing with two serious injuries. I think what's, what this shows is how bad him and J.B. Mooney don't want to be second place. They're more afraid of that than they are uh, competing at the highest level with these serious type of injuries. These guys want that gold buckle on their belt so bad, they're really pushing each other. And the fact of the matter is, it's not just the two of them. Seven men within 1,600 points. Another guy who has designs on the gold buckle is Austin Meyer, and he's standing by with Leah Garcia. Craig, Austin understands the desire to win being stronger than the option to quit. 2010, you finished second in the world stage. Endings. How do you, what's your take on the heart of this sport and the pressure you guys are under? You know, I think, like I said it before, you got to hate to lose more than you love to win. And uh, that's what Valderon's doing right now, you know. He realizes it don't feel very good to come in second. And so he's doing everything he can to keep on riding and keep on trucking. We're going to see you later on riding a bull that you know very well. But before we get to that ride, we're going to check in with Shorty, who has a take also on Valderon coming back. Well, Lee, you know, obviously none of us bullfighters are out, out here are doctors. But w when fighting bulls, we've seen literally hundreds, maybe thousands of wrecks like that. And when you see them from that close, you know, when, when Valderon took that injury, you just hope that he has a chance to ever come back and compete. But to come back and compete two weeks later, I think is a testament to the sport, the toughness of it, the men that are involved in it, and to Valderon and his determination for a world title, Craig. 
Points on the line, double in fact. We show you the 15 matchups. It's gonna start off with Ty Pazabon going up against Chocolate Thunder. We'll work our way through a number of American and Brazilian riders as well. Take note that Jordan Hupp is a late replacement for Guilherme Marchi, who just had a concussion in round number one. Hupp will go up against Carrillo Cartel, but Valderon at the very end will face Cowboy Casanova, a rematch of perhaps epic proportions. Ty, so we start with the Canadian, young Ty Pazabon. We've talked about this a number of times this season, having a great year so th far, but he is going to have his handful, so to speak, with Chocolate Thunder. Yeah, Chocolate Thunder should be around to the left, right there in the gate, into Ty's hand. This bull has really good kick, and he's pretty fast as well. The thing that Ty has to look, look out for is this bull will reverse and go back to the right. This bull was incredibly good last weekend in the 15-15 bucking battle, as well as the championship round where he bucked off Robson Palermo. Bull basically did everything last weekend, didn't he, Ty? Yeah, and that's the thing with him, you know, and the guys can't get a beat on him. But the thing of it is, is he has good kick, good speed, and good timing. Another example right there of all three of those attributes you mentioned. Ty Pazabon down in the dirt, and we'll take another look at this ride to see what happens. Well, this is a smart bull. You know, we talked about that reverse, and, and Ty actually wasn't in bad position when the bull came back around. You can see he's stunned when he hits the ground. It's hard to describe the force with which these men are driven into the dirt. We just talked about Valderon's incident a couple weeks ago, and we start again with Ty Pazabon being dazed. Great job by Dr. Tandy Freeman and his medical staff immediately helping Pazabon out of the arena. Pazabon has had that knee injury, Ty, that's forced him to miss a couple events this season already. And with that buck off, he is only one of five in his chances in the 15-15 bucking battle. We'll give you a little PBR 101. Ty, it all, of course, starts with hanging on for eight seconds. And the maximum we could see in a score would be 100 points. Well, right. You know, you, it is a judge sport. 50 of those points are how, for how well and how much control the rider has. The other 50 are for how hard the bull bucks, how difficult he is to ride. So they're kind of the difficulty of the dive if you were comparing it to diving. Luke Snyder against Red Hot. A ton of power emanating from that bull. You see Snyder just get absolutely tossed off the back. This is a really strong bull. Comes out backwards. That's one that's just really anxious to get going. Whew. So you got to realize how high in the air he goes. Those shoots are six foot high, so he went well above them. Great composure by Luke to at least get his hands down if he was going to land on top of his head. Two quick buck offs. The Bulls having a good start to their day. This is Harv Stewart going up against Shepherd Hill's Sodbuster. This bull has not been ridden a lot this year, only one out of eight times. Well, doesn't have a lot of tricks, Ty, but he can spin. And he spins quick enough to get Stewart off. This bull, this bull has a lot of forward movement. And he kind of wants to, to have a tendency to run guys back and drop them down inside the spin. He starts to work on Harv that way. You see Harv loosen up and make the move to get back to the center. And he just overshoots it a hair. And you know, when a bull's coming around that hard, it's such a fine line. You know, when you're down, in, down inside the spin and you make that move to get out, you got to remember, they're going to take you to either side. When they feel you get a little bit to the outside, that wellingness will go away and they'll tighten it up and then try to whip you to the outside. The Bulls are up 3-0 early on here in Boise. That is our world number one, Valderon, back in action, hoping to protect that top spot.
For the latest sports news, real-time scores, expert analysis, exclusive video, award-winning writers, and fantasy sports, go to cbssports.com. Early on here in Idaho, the Cowboys have yet to get it done, but on paper tie, this is a matchup that could produce huge dividends. Ryan Dirtyder going up against Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation's Gunpowder and Lead. Yeah, this is the bull all the guys want, you know, and the 15-15, he'll be around to the left right there. The bull, uh, the bull fades quite a bit. You can see they're riding 67% of the time, and you know, don't get me wrong, this bull is not a give me. It's not 100% guaranteed, but the top guys in the world, you know, if they're doing their game right, this should be a high score every time. Without question, this pairing is considered one of the round favorites. Ryan Dirtier took last week off because of a concussion he received in Connecticut. He's been bucking off a lot lately, but this is a buck off buster, if you want to call it, because Gunpowder and Lead is just an honest bull, ridden seven out of his last 10 times. And when you look at the 16 scores that we just showed you on that graphic, 12 of those scores have been for over 90 points. This bull is, you know, he has a lot of wow factor. You know, whenever whenever you watch him buck, he, ha he has a very nice style to watch. The difficulty level isn't there like it is on some bulls. If you, watch, if you concentrate on this bull's back, you don't see him get very steep in the jump or very steep in the kick, but you see a lot of movement with his hind legs and his head. So it appears a little more flashy than what it actually is. Gunpowder and lead shifting his position in the chute, trying to get a little bit of an advantage once that gate opens. Initially, when the gate opened, Gunpowder and Lead traveled a bit, but Dirty Dirt able to handle it, and it's now in the judges' hands. You know, and this is where this is the thing that Gunpowder and Lead has going for him. Watch how much he fades as he's spinning. You know, he travels all the way the width of the arena in a spin the whole way, and that you know that was a good outing for him and Ryan both. Now ridden eight out of the past 11 times in the 13th score of over 90. The Rockstar 90 Point Club just got a new member. Ryan Dirty to our first ride here of the 15-15 bucking battle. And that will be one that guys will use as the standard. Let's send it down to Leah. Ryan, what's the level of pressure when you're on a bull that's so rideable? There was a lot of pressure on that bull. All my buddies been riding, been telling him how great he felt. I've been wanting to go in for a while, and I got it done. And you're coming back from a concussion. How are you feeling? I'm just warming up, Leah. <laughs> great. <laughs> Bad news for his competitors. Great news for Dirty Dirt fans. If that's his warm-up bull, we transition quickly to Stormy Wing against a bull that is aptly named Ty Trainwreck. Yeah, this, you know, this bull's very touchy in the shoot, and he wants to get going really fast. Getting that, you know, getting away from there clean on him. You know, you want to take your time. You want to slide up there easy and give a quiet nod, and the gate man know to give a quiet latch, and that means you don't want that latch clanging and banging. This is a wild bull. He's really going to get in the air, and he's probably going to be around to the right, but he's also a smart bull that's going to do, you know, what the rider kind of dictates. If that rider's leaning right, then he's going to do something else. One of the reasons why Cody Lambert, the PBR's director of livestock, brings this bull back time and time again is he always bucks. He hasn't had a score under 44 in over a year. Ty, you have to give Stormy Wing a heck of a lot of credit there. What a contortionist to somehow bend his body the opposite way when Trainwreck exploded out of the game. Well, I thought I thought this is a fantastic ride, and I mean, this bull burns a hole in the ground. He's got good jump. He follows it up every time with good kick. That put him to the lead just, just barely. I thought he could have been a few more points, but I'm not a judge. The judges were duly impressed. Back-to-back -back Rockstar 90-point club rides. Stormy Wing surpasses his friend Ryan Dirtyder by three-quarters of a point.
The men sitting in first and second now, the guys yet to go are going to be hard pressed to supplant them at the top of the leaderboard. The still to come, Caleb Sanderson climbs aboard the bull, party all the time. Then 2010 world champion Renato Nunez takes on the bull power of bucking machine as the PBR 1515 bucking battle continues from Boise, Idaho. Bill Fork Tough Invasion. Thanks to a little help from Shorty Gorm. Me and Brendan got punked. We're just outside of Boise, Idaho. We're going to the Owyhee River Potato Farm. That's right, Luke. This week we bought out Super Duty. It's pulling me over. I need to see license, registration, insurance from everybody in here. Did we do something wrong? Yeah, we'll get to that in just a minute, okay? Where's this Owyhee Potato Farm? Is it in Owyhee County or? Ooh, GPS says we're right here at it. There's not a potato farm. In Meridian. You guys have the registration? Or? Yeah, I mean, we're looking for it. We had a I could have swore it was in here. I need to have you shut the truck off for me. Thank you, Chris. Come on, man. Hey, boys, you have a little trouble? How'd you do that? <laughs> Yeah, but the best part about it, we got our heart racing twice. We got to hang out with the Meridian Police Department and the k unit. The dog comes at you, you're gonna, you're gonna present um, your upper body. They're trained um, to bite <laughs> what's presented to him. So, um, whether, if you stick a leg out, he'll take your leg. If you stick an arm, he'll probably take an arm. All of these dogs are dual purpose canines, and so they're trained in uh, narcotic detection work and then also in the apprehension of criminals. The dogs go home with us every day. They stay at our house, they become part of the family, and, and they become our, our best backup out on the street. All right, Shorty, well, thanks a lot, I think, for uh, setting up a great day with the Meridian Police Department and the canine unit. We had ourselves a ball. Yeah, and Shorty, as you know, the year is only halfway through, and guess what? Your time's coming. Ha <laughs> ha, let the games begin. Go to FordInvasion.com to find where Brendan, Luke, and the rest of Team Invasion will be next. You can also enter for your chance to win a trip to the Built Ford Tough World Finals in Las Vegas and that 2012 F-150 SVT Raptor, just like the one the guys used this week. It's all at FordInvasion.com. Shorty, after seeing that, I got to ask you, would you rather fight those dogs or protect bull riders? I can tell you, I'll take the bull on any day of the week. Those dogs are amazing. You know, they leap at you from 20 feet away, and believe me, when they hit you, they hit you just as hard as these bulls. So uh, when a canine officer tells you to do something, you better, by God, do it. Nice setup, my friend, but you better watch your back. I think they've got something planned. Our bad boy mower lead dog is Stormy Wing. There he is. What a score, 92 points on train wreck. He'll watch and wait and see whether that can hold up the rest of the day. Caleb Sanderson, meanwhile, gets his chance to tie against Party all the time. And this is going to be a tall task. Well, you know, it is. This is a good bull, but with a 92 and a, and a 91 on the board, you, you need a really good bull. This bull's going to be probably around to the left. This is another one that's probably going to reverse, maybe about the seven-second mark. But again, he has good kick and good speed. This, this is one of the bulls you want. Sanderson had a great seat. Meanwhile, party all the time. Definitely wants to keep the party going inside the arena. Credit all the bullfighters for getting Caleb out of there. You know, Caleb's a really big guy, and this bull's fast, round to the left. And, you know, he was looking really good, but you see it start bobbling around up there, and, he, you know, his feet kind of got to bouncing. He was trying to make the adjustments, and things are going so fast. But boy, those adjustments can get really tough. You don't have a lot of time. You go off of the word fast, tie, and this next pairing will have speed as well. Renato Nunez against Bucking Machine. Before they leave the shoots, let's check in with Leah. Renato's been working on tucking his head, riding these bulls, but he has to rethink his strategy on this bull because the minute you nod your head, this bull sucks underneath you. And Renato's been coming out of the chutes with his toes pointed in a little bit, mainly because he's afraid that if he points them out and tucks, that they're going to get caught on the bottom of the gate. So he's going to work right now on handling that first jump out of the chute and keeping both of his toes pointed out to get a better hold on this bull. A word you could use to describe this bull tie is relentless. 
Yeah, you know, Leah brings up a really good point. This bull's going to be to the left right there, and he has that amount of suck back. So when, when you're doing things right, that suck back feels good because it helps set you up on that rope. But if, if your counter moves are a little off or if you don't have a good hold with your feet, these are the type of bulls that you'll see whip a guy down on their head. This bull has been ridden three out of six times this season. It was Fabiano Vieta who rode him in Kansas City for 87 and a half. But he's buffed off the likes of Chris Shivers, J.D. Mooney, and L.J. Jenkins. And back to Leah's point, Ty, after that first jump, Renato did a fantastic job of bringing his head and his chin back down. Well, here comes the signature celebration. The old backflip and... It's nice to see Renato doing it off the top of the chute instead of off the backs of these bulls. This looks like he's, you know, back on his game. Renato loves to lean back when bulls turn back into his hand and make that big sweeping move with his free arm back behind his head and kind of cut them bulls off getting around the corner. I mean, he does it as good as anybody does. You know, you can see right here, he talked about he was going to concentrate on having his toes turned out and having those sp spurs work for him. That's a good job by our cameraman of illustrating that. The judges award his effort, 92 points, a tie for first. Renato standing by with Leah. How was that first jump out of the chute? You know, almost he got me. He got me, but I don't know. I, I get on him again, and I say, no, I can't hoop you. Good job. Great. For the fourth time this season, bucking machine unable to buck off the rider. Renato Nunes makes it pay off. The Brazilian now in a tie for first. Coming up, last week's event winner, Austin Meyer, takes on one of the PBR's best, SmackDown. But first, it's Brazilian Fabiano Vieira versus Cooper Tires, Grey Ghost, as the PBR 1515 bucking battle continues from Boise, Idaho. The danger of this sport entered my mind every single time I did it. And, you know, I probably rode 6,000 head in my career. And just like Luke's an athlete and Ty was an athlete, these bulls are athletes or they're not gonna be at this level. I remember when I was a little kid, and uh, we would be at a roping or something or, or whatever, even in town, and there would be a car wreck. Well, most people were running that way, and I was always running to the wreck. In this sport, you only get paid eight seconds, and if you're 7.9, you're going home with a big zero. Dangerous game inside PBR debuts Sunday afternoon, May 20th, on CBS Sports Network. This look inside the world's most dangerous sport features a round table discussion where I was joined by four of Bull Riding's most notable names, nine-time world champion Ty Murray, PBR Bull Rider Luke Snyder, Bull Fighter Shorty Gorham, and two-time stock contractor of the year Jeff Robinson. That's going to be next Sunday on the CBS Sports Network. And Ty, I think fans are really going to like this because it's an incredibly insightful hour they're going to get to spend. Yeah, and I, you know, I even enjoyed doing it. it you know, it's fun talking with those guys, and it was a, a, a well-rounded group of people that kind of give you you know, the side of, of where they're looking at the business from all the way around, and hopefully they like it. Well, and Shorty, it's one of those things, isn't it? As Ty mentioned, it was fun for all of us to do because it's the sort of thing we sit around and talk about every weekend, but the fans often on our telecast don't get to hear. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I had a good time just for those reasons, and I think the fans are going to have a good time to get the, you know, get into our head and what we're thinking throughout the year. I think they're going to really enjoy it, Craig. Fabiano Vieira going up against Grey Ghost. Shorty, what do you think of this pairing? I like the pairing. This bull, uh, he, he kind of has two trips. One of his trips, he'll have a little bit of hesitation and a little bit of whip. He's a longer built bull. If Fabiano gets behind him, that could work on him, but but I, I don't see that happen. I, I see another ride here on some great bulls. This, this is an exciting night for me, Craig. We saw this bull a week ago in Billings in the championship round where Cooper Tires, Grey Ghost combined with Ben Jones for 87 and three quarters. Fabiano Vieira is credited once in Brazil for riding 60 in a row. And right there, that was about 
as sticky as a rider gets, Ty, and as structurally sound as we've seen. Yeah, he makes a really neat move right out of here. Watch how his hips get set to the outside right there. And look at the adjustment he makes right here. See how he just scooches him back over? That's a very calm guy that doesn't panic. You know, bull riding, it's a give and take thing. You can't just make the adjustments whenever you want. Whenever a bull is in the jump, that's all That's all take. You, you just gotta hold what you got. When they peak and break over and start to kick, that's when you have a chance to make that move and get set back down into the kick, and Fabiano did it perfectly. 90 and a quarter, the fourth score we've seen here in the 15-15 bucking battle, and the fourth one over 90. We now come to Austin Meyer and SmackDown. These two have met before. Billings in the 15-15 bucking battle, the bull won that one. Yeah, this is, you talk about battle of the bulls. It, you know, this is two of the, the strongest bull and the strongest bull rider going, and, and they both gut it out and give it everything they've got every single time and this is going to be a fun ma uh, match up to watch i know for me I, you know the thing of it is is austin has got to keep moving if he tries to outstrength smackdown he, he's going to end up he's going to end up winning second <laughs> and that's not you know and i don't mean second in the bull riding i mean second to the bull and it, he has the ability and the talent, no doubt, to ride this bull. He's just got to keep, stay loose, keep moving, and adjusting. Smackdown ridden only one out of his last seven times. Four and a half seconds will be the official buck off time at about four seconds. It looked like Austin Meyer lost his feet and just started falling over the front end. You see him, you know, he loosens up. And he's, every time he tries to get to the inside, this bull has so much whip. You see how every jump and kick, he horseshoes. Like as he jumps, he horseshoes to the left, and as he kicks, he horseshoes his body to the right. I, that, that's an amazing bull because he has been bucked a lot, and he's been bucked a lot this year, and he just brings it every single time. For the second week in a row, SmackDown shows Austin Meyer how it's done. Our co-leader, Renato Nunez, enjoying that bad boy mower lead spot with Stormy Wing. They're tied at 92 points apiece. J.B. Mooney defied the odds against one of the PBR's toughest bulls last week. Coming up, we'll take a closer look inside the life of J.B.'s grandfather, where a sports injury was only the beginning as the PBR 1515 bucking battle continues from Boise, Idaho. A lot of PBR fans, they think that the Bloodlines is just for the Bulls, and uh, most of it is, but Bloodlines also run in the family too. JV's grandfather, we called him Catfish. My father played professional baseball. And it didn't matter if he was 20 runs ahead or 20 runs behind, he played the same way. He, he played to win, he didn't play to lose. He played up until he sprained his ankle real bad and started the issues with his legs, uh, lost one leg, which eliminated the playing days, and then lost his second leg. At that time, uh, a lot of people that lost their legs with injuries would just want to give up. They would quit. Uh, Catfish had no quit in him. He just uh, kept going. He never gave up playing baseball. When he couldn't actually run, he actually sat at home, played, and hit the ball and would have a runner run for him. He just wanted to bat. You know, I see old pictures and what my mom tells me, you know, both his legs was amputated and he was still uh, baseball, doing all that with baseball and everything, never slowed him down. He never did give up, just like JB. He don't give up on that bull ride. J.B. Mooney continues his attempt to ride with his opposite hand. Anytime somebody tells me I can't do something, I'm going to try everything I can to do it. And I feel like that's the way he was, you know. I mean, a lot of people said, I guarantee you, a lot of people said he couldn't, you know, do a lot of things, not having any legs, and he went right ahead and did it. Look at that! He gets the ride, he gets the points, and he takes the hits. For him, it was using his right hand. For my dad, it was how can I do that without legs? He never let it slow him down. He kept right on getting it and doing what he was doing when he had two good legs. And uh, I looked at it like, if he could do that, you know, I can do it. I can ride bulls right-handed. 
His first qualified ride as a right-hander, and this is going on the highlight reel. Toughness definitely runs in the bloodline of this family. Me and my grandfather and me, we're going we're gonna to fight till the bitter end, whether it's my right hand, my left hand, we're here for the long haul. JB's family tree filled with guys who have risen to the occasion, Ty, and we both know JB loves a challenge. You know, and that's that's what makes me a fan of his, and that's why you root for him is, you know, you see him pull off things that some top athletes can't do because they don't have that kind of guts, and, and you talk about a sport that takes guts, I'll put this one up there above any, any sport. That's what this sport is based on. JB also able to just flip that switch at times and compartmentalize exactly what needs to be done. Those are your four scores so far. Renato Nunes and Stormy Wing tied at 92 apiece. And now it's a chance to check in with Marco Agushe against Bucky. This is a rematch. These two met back in Portland in the championship round there. The bull bucked off Marco in six seconds. We've talked about what a great season it has been for a Gouche, and this is a bull tie that can give his A game every time he leaves the shoot. Yeah, this bull should be around to the right. Really good jump and really good kick. However, at Billings last week, he kind of had a different trip, and, and it was kind of treacherous. You know, it's, I think the guy was leaning to the right just a little bit, which, which wasn't encouraging him to go to the right, and it, it, it changed his timing and made him throw a big, kind of a wicked jump around to the left in there. So this is a bull that I that I think we're seeing advance and get better because he's understanding the game. He's understanding how he has to feel for those riders. And I think he's doing that. Last week, it was Silvano Alves on the back of Bucky in the championship round in Billings. The score of 89 and a half was the result. This is also the bull that Valderon rode in Sacramento in the 15-15 bucking battle for a whopping 94 points. It took a little bit of time, but once Bucky settled into that right-hand spin tie, you could just feel the power from that bull. Yeah. This is a big, strong, athletic bull. You see him, he almost kind of gives a look to the left, and he has that kind of bouncing deal out through there. Wipe that banner out, about crush Shorty. <laughs> Jordy, getting a little western out there? That, that was a weird feeling, Ty, when you go running head on into a bull and all of a sudden the banner covers him up and you can't see where he is. <laughs> it's a good thing you're a multitasker. Yeah, get that banner out of the way, let him have me. <laughs> For Marco, the end result is a buck off, no score, and no chance to match the four on the board. Our next pairing is J.B. Mooney, who continues to ride with his opposite hand. Here he's paired up against Bad Blake, and before they go, here's Leah. This is a personal note. This past Tuesday, May 8, J.B. married his fiance, fiance Lexi Wesley Wigley, and uh, he's known her for five years. They were talking about getting married, and she said to JB, listen, if you wake up Tuesday morning and you can fit a ring on your finger, we're going to the courthouse. He woke up that morning after having iced his hand and keeping it up in the air, and they went to the courthouse immediately that morning. Nobody was there except for one witness, and both of them are happy as can be. Good news for JB and his family. You see Stormy Wing on the shoots helping JB get situated. Bad Blake, runner-up to backbender last year for the ABBI champ. This bull has produced great scores throughout his career, ridden five out of eight times this year, Ty. But JB is going to have to work for this one. Well, you know, you can't, because he's ridden two bulls with his opposite hand, you're still talking about an amazing feat that he's trying to tackle. And this bull, he's going to be around to the right, and he's a really good bull. I think if JB was riding with his normal hand, but... I think he's got his work cut out for him. He's got to stay up on his rope. With bulls that have been spinning into his hand, he's had a little trouble with that. He does it again. Against one of the best bulls in the business, J.B. Moody has an answer.
How bad does J.B. Mooney want to have a world championship and a gold buckle on his belt? I mean, this is, this is, you know, this is an amazing talent, amazing athletic ability. You know, what he's doing, we've talked about it, what, you know, what it would be like. You're not, it's not just changing the hand that you hold on with. It's everything that you do. See, they're taking a review. Looks to me like he's going to get it. You know, you, you got to still be have your hand somewhere on the rope. It looked to me like he did that. You're talking about a lot of guts and a lot of athletic talent. We're being told it is official. JB will get the score and the needed points. cannot say enough about what this is like. We've talked about how this would be like a quarterback in the Super Bowl throwing a touchdown pass with his opposite arm. This just isn't supposed to happen, but J.B. Mooney has found a way yet again. Today's Dickies pick of the pin is Creo Cartel. It's gonna be at a right hand delivery, most likely gonna go to the right and stay to the right. What makes him so impressive is when the gate opens, he slams his foot on the gas pedal. As the ride goes on, he tries to push it through the floorboard, only picking up speed and power as the ride goes on. So look for great things to happen with Creo Cartel, and it's coming up next. Only four matchups left in our 15-15 bucking battle. Jordan Hupp will go up against Creo Cartel. Then we'll see LJ Jenkins, Silvano Alves, and Valderon get their shots. A late change. This is why Jordan Hupp is in. Guilherme Marchi tie in an earlier round, went up against Midnight Mood. He gets the score, but he also gets hit twice. Yeah, after the whistle, when he reached down to grab the tail of his rope, his timing got a little bit off, and you see that bull whip him down. Cut his chin. He's going to have a concussion out of this one. It was scary to watch as it is every time, but it was sure good to see him get up with a smile on his face, salute the crowd as he was walking out. He is here, and Galerme showing that he could indeed be superhuman. For more on his status, let's send it to Leah. I talked to Dr. Tandy Freeman, and Ty is correct. He did suffer a concussion and has a lacerated chin. Tandy Freeman pulled him from the 15-15 competition. He's probable for round two of the regular season event. But Galerme said he feels pretty good. He doesn't remember getting hit, but right now he's aware of everything that's going on. Jordan Huff gets paired with the bull that has produced some whopping scores over the years. 48 outs on the Built Ford Tough Series, but only ridden one out of his last seven, Ty. This is one of my favorite bulls, and you know, this is another bull that's been around for a long time, and he just performs so well every time. They used to buck him out of a left-hand delivery. You know, he'd burn a hole in the ground to the left. They switched him over to the right side. Now he'll burn a hole in the ground to the right. And, you're talking about a lot of rounds, and, and it's just, you know, what an amazing athlete to be. It's it's one thing to be really good, but to be really good for a long period of time is a, is a whole other ball of wax, and that's something that this bull's been able to do. Let's check in with Leah again. I spoke with Cody Lambert, the director of livestock, and he said that he's watching Creo Cartel this week, and he thinks that this bull is getting a bit tired. So he may not be in the round next weekend in Pueblo, Colorado. He's watching him, though. Well, if he's lost a step, it was still good enough to get Jordan Hupp off at 7.9. Let's send it back to Leah. Another thing that he did point out is that he kept that bull in his regular delivery, but one of his other options was to switch deliveries next weekend. I'm sure that Lambert will have something to say after this. They're going to take another look at this one, Ty, and you have to figure this close Jordan Hupp should challenge. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm not sure watching it live the first, you know, the first time around, it looked to me like he didn't make it. Oh, no, not even close from that angle. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's going to be fruitful to challenge it. But, you know, you got to take your, your hat off to that bull. That's that's the Jerry Rice of bulls. You know, even an older bull that may be getting a little bit tired. That was a pretty spectacular day and, <laughs> yeah. and he won. Still is a lot speedier than most of the other ones. This is LJ Jenkins now who matches up against Sue. This bull has been ridden 
three of his last four times, and he's just a solid bull across the board. Yeah, this bull, you know, he, he can't. He kind of has two trips. He can fake left and go right, or he might just go left. So not real sh sure there. I think he kind of makes that decision once he gets out there and, and feels where the rider is at on his back. Last time we saw this bull, Marco Agushi rode him in Glendale. A tad herky-jerky once the gate opened, enough to get Jenkins off. The difficulty level goes up when these bulls keep changing up the rhythm. You see how he kind of does a double kick and a bounce and, and then hesitates and then kicks again. That's harder than a bull that just jump, kick, jump, kick, jump, kick, because you can get into a rhythm and it, it makes your uh, mechanics of your moves and your counter moves work a lot easier. When they throw in those bounces and those skips and those hesitations, that, that makes it a lot tougher. Dual bad boy mower lead dogs on the left-hand side of the screen, Stormy Wing. On the right, Renato Nunez. They both have 92 points, waiting to see a couple rides from now whether that will keep them on top. Coming up on the PBR 1515 Bucking Battle, last year's world champion, Silvano Alves, continues his climb to the top of the standings. He'll face the bull Megaton. Then Valderon de Oliveira returns from injury. He'll face the bull Cowboy Casanova as we ride on from Idaho on CBS. Five qualified rides, four of them for over 90 points. Renato and Stormy in the lead, tied at 92. The next pairing, Silvano Alves and Megaton. Silvano in that stalking position, sitting just behind Valderon in the world standings. Here's Leo with more. I spoke with Silvano prior to the event, and I asked him a little bit more about his strategy, strategy midweek. Now, he's one who focuses very directly when he gets to an event. And nevertheless, midweek, what Silvano says he does is he gets on his horse and he rides. He rides his bicycle. And he doesn't forget about bull riding. Everything that he does, every move that he makes when he's doing other sports, whether that's team roping, riding his bike, whatever it is, he's thinking about bull riding and thinking about a perfect ride. Shorty, what do you think makes Silvano so tough? I think it's just that, Craig. He's always thinking about bull riding. And when you love something as much as this guy does, and when you practice it as much as you and run it through your head all the time, you're going to be good at it, Craig. And, and, and I think this is going to be a great matchup. One thing I want to point out before we get going here, this bull is really mean. So watch at the end of the deal, we're going to try to pick and roll. The three of us are going to try to hit this bull, keep fighting for his shoulder. In other words, try to get it out of his head. We're going to tag team him, hope he, hopefully get Savannah out here safely, Craig. Silvano Ty, I think, is a different caliber rider than this bull has faced before. How do you see this going? Well, I see it. I mean, I never bet against Silvano. This is a good little bull. He's a small bull. He has really good kick. He's going to be around to the left. I think he will reverse. You know, like Shorty said, it is a mean bull, and, and those guys have got to be on their toes. That doesn't concern Silvano, and that's what's so great about having the bull fighters that we got is it allows the riders to concentrate on their job because they know the bullfighters are going to be concentrating on theirs as well. As I mentioned, Alves in the predator position, just waiting for his moment to pounce on Valderon. If Valderon shows any weakness at all, Silvano could be our new number one by the end of this weekend. Silvano trying to become the first man to ever win back-to-back -back world titles. These 15-15 bucking battles could be a huge part of that. Great call by you, partner. You said the bull would start to the left and come back around and if these bulls could watch videotape, they would tell each other, don't turn into Alves's hand, because that's not going to do anything. Well, the thing that is with Alves, I don't think it matters which way they turn. I mean, I've seen bulls, every type of bull, every size of bull, every trick in the book. You know, I've seen it at one time or another. Alves has an answer for all of it, and he stays very calm. You know, this guy goes, is able to go. I've never seen him get hurt. You, you don't even hardly see him with bumps and bruises. And, and he, 
you know, that's what makes him so amazing, and that's what gives him a really good chance at being the very first guy to ever be a back-to-back -back world champion in the PBR. He doesn't get hurt because he rarely gets out of position, so now the pressure is on our world number one, Valderon de Oliveira. He came back to Boise because he wanted to protect his lead. He now gets his chance against Cowboy Casanova. Here's Leah until this Thursday that Valderon spoke with Dr. Tandy Freeman and got cleared to come to this event because he was symptomless, basically. He has no more headaches and he's not feeling dizzy. He even sent Tandy a picture of him in the gym. He's worked out four times this week, really put it to it. He was lifting weights and training really hard. He said that he did watch the show last weekend and he watched his wreck and he said that was a tough thing to look at. But. He was pleased with his ride, and so he's carrying that forward to today. Cowboy Casanova, one of Mesa Pate's babies. She loves this bull and takes care of him accordingly. Let's go back to something Leah just hinted at, Ty. You and I both talked to Valderon earlier in the locker room, and I was amazed when he said, I didn't feel any pain after that wreck. I mean, we have seen it time and time again. That astounds me that he, he felt he was fine physically. Yeah, and well, he's a very tough guy. I mean, you've got to be in this sport, but I, you know, I think the thing it shows more than anything is how bad he he wants a world championship. He knows he's not going to get it setting at home. And, you know, he, he knows his body better than anybody. And he says he's ready to ride. After watching his good friend Silvano Alves make it to eight, Valderon willed himself to the time limit. Ninety-one and a quarter points, so not only does he get the ride tied, but he gains points on Silvino. Yeah, and I mean, this is a great ride. He makes all the adjustments. You know, he never had a comfortable seat on this bull the whole way, and it, it's so fun to see athletes that want it so bad and work so hard at it we've got a world championship race on our hands and it is deep seven qualified rides in this 15 15 bucking battle five of them were over 90 points one of the best battles we have seen all season long and why wouldn't it be because every man is riding with something to prove we've got dual winners here in boise Renato Nunez and Stormy Wing tie for the lead. These are the official results. That score of 92 held up throughout the day. Valderon with a late 91 and a quarter ties with Ryan Dirtyter for third. And credit Fabiano, JV, and Silvano for once again getting the job done. Here's Leah with an extended interview. Dual winners, Stormy Wing, Renato Nunez. Congratulations, Stormy. You knew what you had to do on that bull because of the delivery and the way that that bull is going to come out. Talk about how you handled it. Uh, I just eased up on him, and, and when I did and nodded for him, he's bad to, you know, listen for that latch to click, and he did and, and came out clean and ended up being a good ride. And a similar story for Renato. Now that you've had a moment to think about that ride on the bull, what stands out? Yeah, I feel really good, you know, and... Uh, I got a little trouble in the beginning of the ride, but I get it done, and I feel we're very excited for tomorrow. Congratulations to both of you. Two winners, which means we get to double down on our Wrangler rides of the day, Ty, both Renato and Stormy. Let's take a look at them. I thought this was an amazing ride away from his hand, being very aggressive. You see him keep readjusting his feet position. That was the ride of the night in my book. And then Renato gets to answer. Well, Renato, you know, he's, he's a guy that finds a way to win no matter what. And the wilder it is, the, the more he likes it. And, and he's just so fun to watch. Very electric rider. Here are your season points after our bucking battle. Valderon increases the lead just a smidge over Silvano. LJ sitting in that third position. Mark G and JB Mooney round out your top five. Coming up next, the Lucas Oil Off-Road Pro 2 and Pro 4 from Firebird, Arizona. And tune into the next 1515 Bucking Battle, which will be next Sunday, May 20th at 2 p.m. Eastern, right here on CBS. Congratulations once again to Renato Nunez and Stormy Wing, our champions here in this Bucking Battle. 
Don't forget to tune in to CBS Sports Network tonight for continued coverage from Boise at 6 p.m. Eastern. For Leah Garcia, Shorty Gorham, Ty Murray, and our entire crew, I'm Craig Hummer. Thanks for watching. Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Previously on the PBR. For the 17th year in a row, Billings welcomes the world of bull riding. Valderon, still the world number one, but Silvano has closed that gap. How fun is this guy to watch? In the PBR's 15-15 bucking battle, no one was better than Guilherme Marchi. This is really incredible. Ben Jones is back. You know, it's so fun to watch Ben Jones do good and talk about flying high. No, back up and hold on tight. Austin Meyer will be your winner in Montana. This is bull ride. Look at that. His first qualified ride as a right-hander, and he takes the hits. J.B. Mooney has made a huge stride towards a world championship. This is the PBR. The Built for Tough Series has blown into Boise for the weekend, and Idaho has dialed up a picture-perfect day. Happy Mother's Day to all our fans. Rest assured, our riders would love to give their moms the present of seeing them succeed at stop number 18. World number one Valderon de Oliveira has made his return from injury pay off. He's ridden both his bulls and has increased his lead in the overall standings. Defending PBR world champion Silvano Alves loves this area. The last time we were here, he won in his first ever Built for Tough Series event. And JB Mooney originally returned to ride with his opposite hand to stay relevant in the race for the world title. Now he seems to be setting a new standard for excitement every time he leaves the shoots. This crowd has waited two years for the PBR's best. Last night it was a full house. Today we declare a victor here in the Idaho Center. Let's take a look at our updated season standings. Valderon has increased his lead over Silvano. It now stands at almost 600 points. The only man now within 1,000 is LJ Jenkins. Marchi and JB Mooney round out your top five overall. And in terms of the event, Emilio Resende with a fantastic ride sits in first, just ahead of Stephenville, Texas's Harv Stewart. And Marchi as well sits in third. However, he will not be getting on a bull today. We'll give you more about that in a second. Austin Meyer was one of the 18 men to get a qualified ride in round number one. He sits in 18th. It was only 68 and a half points, but it is points on the board, and he's standing by with Leah Garcia. Craig, the reason why he kept that score on the board is because he injured his ribs yesterday on 10, 11, and 12. He had some damage on those, and so he decided to sit out, but he said nothing to cry about, something he'll worry about midweek. More importantly, what Austin and I talked about before the event is the position of his bull rope. One of the things that he was working on yesterday in the 15-15 bucking battle was where he put his rope. He changed that position. Normally, where you see right now, his bull rope is where it always is. He doesn't mess, mess with it or fiddle with it at all. He tries to keep his hand right to the left of the block. And because he uses the Brazilian bull rope, what he likes about that is that if that bull pulls on him, it's just going to make him hang on tighter. 
Ty, I don't think you can explain this enough. Follow up on what Leah just said. What is the main difference between a Brazilian bull rope and an American rope and where your hand is? Well, it's the side they pull from. You can see this one pulls from this side, an American rope would pull from this side. And what that does is, if anything, when you're scooting up and getting ready to ride or when you leave the chute, it's going to make the rope go, in this case, to the right, where with an American rope it wants to pull down to the left. So it comes, becomes pretty crucial of where you put your hand. Myers up against Serendipity. No problem with positioning today. Austin Meyer is going to like that second score. Completely centered on Serendipity, and he becomes the first man to go two for two. Yeah, and I mean, everything looks good. It doesn't look like his ribs are bothering him that bad. You know, everything looks like his hand is right where he wanted it to be on this bull. And, you know, he's making the moves. He's opening up with his legs, and he keeps readjusting them. And when Austin does that is when we see him at his best. The only time we ever see him really struggle is when he tries to really lock down. Let's send it back down to Leah. Now that you're two for two, are you pleased with keeping the score yesterday? I don't know. We'll see if we make short round, and then I'll answer that. He is currently in the lead, though. <laughs> You're right, but it's as simple as that. You need to be in the top 10 to make the Built Ford Tough Championship round, and that will only be determined at the end of round number two. Luke Snyder chose Cool Hand Luke. This was a draft round. He scored 83 and a quarter aboard Lord Baltimore last night. These two have met before. You gotta figure the laundry's gonna come out on this one, meaning we'll see a re-ride, and sure enough, Ty, that's what happens. The good news for Luke Snyder is the last time these two met, the bull bucked him off. Well, this bull is a yellow jacket junior calf, and he, he's usually out of a out of a uh, well, he's usually out of a left-hand delivery. This is the first time out of a right-hand delivery, and I and I think it might have kind of messed this bull up. And what the delivery does is it causes bulls to leave on one lead or the other. Bulls like to buck on leads the same way a horse likes to canter on a lead. And I'm not sure that was a great call for that bull. Luke will get a chance at another one. And more often than not, you will see these guys take the rewrite option because the rewrite pen seems to be a lot more established as well as a much better chance. He is going to take the re-ride and he will have a bull by the name of Dark Shadow, we're told. That actually was gonna be the bull that Galerme Marchi would have had here in round number two. It's now Chase Outlaw against Will James. Here's Leah with more. This is one of Mesa Pace bulls. She's got a couple bulls back to back and I asked her which one was the strongest and she said she's most pleased with the way Will James has come around. This bull was heavy, but she's got him on a training program and is liking the way he's bucking. Some good power from Will James. It looked as though Chase Outlaw had that bull completely figured out at five seconds, but then all it took, Ty, was one big lunge, and Outlaw was off. Yeah, that can be difficult. You know, you see how this bull kind of slows down and gets where he's, you know, really rearing up in the front end and, and kind of gives it a hesitation and then breaks over forward there, and that hesitation is what really runs Chase Outlaw back and on the end of his arm, and then when he breaks over, all that jerk, you know, there, you don't have anything to absorb it with your arm, so it's just gonna jerk your whole body forward. Outlaw's only ridden two of his last dozen. Now we transition to Cody Nance aboard Mean-Eyed Cat. He was another guy that was offered a re-ride last night, declined. He has 75 points on the board. This is a chance for him to add to that total. And in a similar fashion to Austin Meyer, Ty Nance came in with a low score, needing a ride. He gets it done, and he gets it done emphatically. Yeah, this, this is a bull that, you know, will go either direction. Today, he decides to go to the left, and, and once he decides, he just, I mean, he just keeps it coming harder and faster, and you see Cody Nance opening up with his outside leg. You know, again, that's trying to show the judges that he has total control. That's Mesa Pate. Contractor of Mean Eyed Cat. 
And you can judge from her facial expression that she perhaps wanted a little bit more out of the bull. That's only the second time in seven outs that bull has been ridden. Austin Meyer at the moment, our bad boy mower lead dog, but scores waiting on Cody Nance. We will get you those scores in a moment, and we will be back with a lot more from round number two here in Idaho, working our way towards the Built Ford Tough Championship round. The PBR Built Ford Tough series on CBS Sports Network is brought to you by True Value Hardware. For all the right tools, products, and expert advice, true value. Start right, start here. And by Lucas Oil, the world's leader of high performance and problem solving lubricants. No one was better in round one tie than Emilio Resende. Well, look at this bull, a lot of kick, and I mean, keeps coming around to the left, fading across the arena. Look how Emilio just keeps moving every part of his body, counter move after counter move. This would be Guilherme Marchi taking two huge hits. Boy, that's bad to watch. You know, and throughout my lifetime, I've seen it hundreds and hundreds of times, but it always puts a chill up your spine. Whenever you see it, it was sure good to see him walking out and saluting the crowd. In the 15-15 bucking battle, J.B. Mooney would continue to find a way. You know, amazing, this guy is the playmaker. He finds a way to win, and I think it's showing how bad he wants a world championship. Two guys would tie for first, Renato Nunez among them. This is typical Renato Nunez. You know, lean back, come in the back door, open up with that outside leg. The wilder it gets, the better he likes it. Stormy Wing would match that score aboard train wreck. Boy, this is the ride that impressed me. Great ride for Stormy Wing away from his hand. The bull kept bringing it, and so did he. Dual winners of the 15-15 bucking battle earlier today. We welcome you back inside the Idaho Center and more specifically to the PBR's Built Ford Tough Skybox and alongside nine-time world champ Ty Murray. I'm Craig Hummer. Cody Nance did get a score, Ty. He is on the board, 87 points. We didn't show it amongst those highlights, but the buzz this weekend really has been world number one Valderon and the fact that only two weeks after getting stomped into the dirt, getting knocked out, the concussion, the broken ice, socket he continues to do everything he can to keep his number one ranking Craig and I mean everything you know and it's fun <laughs> to see nuances of the game and what the top guys are able to do to help manipulate things to help their cause I want to show you on tape what he did now he had the bull cowboy Casanova this bull likes to blow out of there and turn back to the left Valderon would rather him spin to the right watch his hand right here as he nods he'll adjust his arm kind of hold that gate and slow it down just a little bit now that makes it where the gate stays in the bull's line of sight. He knows there's an opening and he wants to find it. He knows it's going to be back around this way to the right, which is going to cause this bull to have a right-handed spin and trip instead of the left. And I mean, that plays right into Valderon's hand. He loves that and is able to make a great ride. You and I both know every sport has moves, maneuvers, nuances that until you really pick it apart as you just did, the average fan doesn't see another guy close on to the top of the leaderboard who's trying to find his way to finally win one this season is Harv Stewart. He's with Leah. Harv is wearing the number 41 on his back plate. That's where he finished last year in the season, currently sitting 17th. Apart from this event, where are you in terms of your potential? Uh, I feel great this year. I had a little shaky start last year, but uh, like you said, a 17th this year, and I think it should be better. Uh, falling off bulls I shouldn't have, but starting to pick it up and uh, feel great, feel confident, and having fun. Sounds good. He's going to have a two-time rematch tonight. Craig. These guys had the pick of their bulls, and Harv, because he was seated so well after round one, had a very good pick. Cody Nance, as we mentioned, got that second qualified ride, so he becomes our new leader just ahead of Austin Meyer. Chad Bestplug as well got a score in there, so three qualified rides so far in round number two. Casey Hayes trying to add his name to the mix. He matches up against a bull by the name of 82. Yeah, I don't know a lot about this bull. I know he's around to the left. That's going to be right into Casey Hayes' hand. And I like to watch Casey Hayes ride. When, when he's on his game, this is a small, skinny guy that can really do it. Didn't take much time at all for 82 to get Casey Hayes in the 9-1-1 position. He needed help almost immediately. Well, and this is the other side of the coin. Watch his right foot as this bull leaves there. He goes to the end of his arm and then 
You see his right leg just swoops back behind him completely over the bull's back. And, you know, there's a reason that leg got whipped back like that, and that was because he let that bull shoot out of there without him. And that's kind of the other side of the coin for Casey Hayes. We see him at moments make unbelievably spectacular, great bull rides. And then the next time out, he might do something like that. For the first time tonight, let's check in with Shorty Gorham. Shorty, to add to what Ty just said, Casey leaves you scratching your head sometimes, doesn't he? He really is one of those guys. You know, you, you see him make great rides like Ty just said, and then the next time he just seems to fall off, and, and he's a very, very talented guy. I don't know what causes him to do that. If he ever did get on a streak, that's a guy that can really go set the world on fire. We made note a couple weeks ago of Lachlan Richardson, the Australian, winning his first ever Built Ford Tough Series event. Casey Hayes, the same thing back in Tulsa of 2006. This is Dusty Ephraim. The direction change of Hot Dog puts Ephraim into the dirt. Dusty now only one of his last 11. You know, when this bull comes around to the left, he's just as nice as he can be, all the timing in the world, and, and Dusty's setting in a good place. And you know, it wasn't a real shocking reversal. I mean, the bull almost even put a blinker on. That was one that got away from him. As nice as that bull was into his hand, he should have been setting in good enough position to handle that reverse, no problem. Well, we talked about scratching our heads sometimes with Casey Hayes. The same could be said of Dusty Ephraim. The Canadian is so good at times, but at others, you just wonder how that ride got away. 2010 PBR world champ Renato Nunez is now looking for his first score of the weekend, although he did great in the 15-15 bucking battle, as we mentioned, tying for the win aboard bucking machine. Before he goes in this round, here's Leah. As a matter of fact, Renato is working off of that last ride in the 15-15 bucking battle. He's pretty excited about tonight's matchup because this is an HD page bull, and he says he likes the fact that these bulls are rank, they can put a good score on the board for him, and his next criteria was that it's out of the left-hand delivery, and he loves bulls that go out of that delivery. Ty, you know, it's funny. I In the locker room earlier, talking to these guys, a lot of them mentioned that if it's an HD page bull, they're going to pick them almost sight on scene because they know they're not going to be in an event like this unless they can get a good score. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, HD, the pages have had such good bulls for such a long time. And, you know, if you look at their bulls, they're a different looking bull. They're very muscular and very in shape. Renato, surprisingly, has only ridden two out of his last dozen. Gravy Train does not make it easy on Nunes. No, and if you watch why, watch how this bull hops and skips and bounces. And, you know, this is a, a lot of ranked bulls that you see do this. You can see how he bounces off that front end and kind of regathers himself and then kicks and then bounces and then shoots forward and then kicks. And, you know, it just throws a guy's timing all off and as opposed to a bull that will jump, kick, jump, kick. And, that doesn't play into, into Renato's hand at all. Renato may have had that great score earlier today, but he is done for the weekend. Meanwhile, world number one Valderon de Oliveira has sent a statement so far here in Boise. No one is going to take his top spot without a fight. Bringing up to speed in week number 18. We've talked about Valderon riding two for two so far this weekend. J.B. Mooney, of course, that amazing third ride with his opposite hand. Five out of seven of the rides earlier today in the 15-15 bucking battle were for 90 points or higher. And SmackDown once again showing that he is absolutely in the running for world champion bucking bull. One man who is not in round number two is former defending PBR world champ Guilherme Marchi. Here's Leah with more. Guilherme took a hard hit yesterday. He was knocked out in the arena and he suffered a concussion and also had some stitches put in his chin. He originally drew a bull for tonight's competition, Dark Shadow. Came here with full intention of riding, but Dr. Tandy Freeman gave him some tests and said, no, you will not ride today. He will go and see Tandy next week in Dallas on Tuesday or Thursday to determine whether or not he's fit to ride in Pueblo. We all saw Guilherme earlier, and 
he did feel he was going to be in the lineup. Disappointed that he could not get his chance. We take a look at our Armor All Section 2 lineup. It's going to start with our world number one, Valderon, as well as Nathan Shopper, who's going for his second score of the weekend. Great to see Brendan Clark in the mix, who took advantage of being a late entry here and got a qualified ride in round number one. He's also here in section number two, but it all begins, Ty, with the guy who really has stepped up this week. He called Leah, remember, last week during the show, and it killed him to be watching at home because Tandy kept him out because of that concussion. He's making up for lost time here. Well, he is, and, you know, and he seems right on track, and he seems very focused, and, and nothing's going to... It seems that nothing is going to stand in his way in his, in his bid for a world championship this year. It's kind of an interesting uh, pick, this Jack Black. This is a bull that's strong and, and kind of out of line. Nobody's real positive what he's going to do. I mean, I, I would never bet against Valeron because I think he can ride any of them, but this is just an interesting pick in my book. Hey, Shorty, I'm going to take Ty's comment a step further. This bull's only been ridden twice in 39 outs. Are you surprised Valderon picked this one? Well, I haven't looked at the stats, Craig, but I don't know if this bull's had Valderon or not yet. He might change that. No, I'm not surprised. This guy can ride anything. I asked him today how he felt last night. He said, oh, I look a little bit ugly, but I felt good riding. I jokingly told him, I said, you weren't very pretty when it started. Don't worry about it. <laughs> An appropriate comment from Shorty Gorham. This bull may have a lot of buck-offs, but Valderon Ty had never been on his back. That's what I say. You just can't hardly ever bet against this guy. It doesn't matter what bulls throw at him. You know, and if, if you look at this bull and the way he bucked before he turned back, that's going to have a lot of guys strung out, out of position, getting jerked around, and then by the time the spin comes, they're already, you know, out of the game. Valderon, doesn't matter what the Bulls do, he just makes them all look simple, and that's the reason he's the world number one. And he moves into first, he's with Leah. Valderon, how strong is your focus? Uh, my focus, I feel very good. I do uh, every day exercise, a lot of prep in my house. Every week, say my wife, say this week, and my turn, I go, I go to the event for the win. You know, I don't care. I win tech. I win fourth. Every week, the same focus, Craig. Good mantra to have. Nathan Shopper hoping to do the same. This is a transformed rider, Ty. The North Dakota kid coming into this weekend, five events without a score. He went one for three last weekend in Billings. This weekend, a perfect two for two. You always talk about Austin Meyer staying in motion. That's what Shopper did here. Yeah, it looks really good. And, you know, it's got to feel good to him to get the train back on the tracks. And, you know, once you can start stringing a few qualified rides together and you get that feel and you get the timing and the balance and the movement and all that, and then the confidence comes behind that, uh, this young guy, he's, he's one of the bigger guys on the tour, and he's, he's looking very well. Nothing shaky about Shopper aboard Shaky Waters. 85 and a quarter moves him all the way into second in the standings. It's definitely going to take two to make it in. Brendan Clark trying to be amongst those top ten when we get to the Built Ford Tough Championship round. He chose night deposit. These two met before in Des Moines a few weeks ago. That weekend, the bull was better. This bull should be around to the right end of Brendan's hand. And, you know, Brendan's a veteran. Sometimes he has trouble hanging on to his rope. This bull's got a real attitude left up, too. We're going to have to work on this one. Hey, hey. Let's try Frank. No, no, no. Clark is thrown wide. So from a safety standpoint, it's all good for the rider. But he's off at about halftime. See this bull, you, you know, usually about this point right here, he comes on around to the right. And uh, this time he's smarter than that. He made the big move to the right, then changed his mind, changed it up, and it did trick Brendan. Yesterday, Brendan got his first qualified ride of the season. Today, a buck off won't allow him to continue his weekend. Canadian Ty Pazabon chose to miss last week in order to rest up his injured knee. A second score and a trip to the Built Ford Tough Championship round could make all that pain go away.
Well, I'd like to give a shout out to my mom uh, back home in Grapevine, Arkansas. I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day and hope your day is great. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Love you and hope to see you soon. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, you've been with me through thick and thin, bangs bruised and busted up. And I just want to tell you I love you. Thanks for taking care of me and helping Dad take me to all them rodeos and stuff. Hey, Mom, happy Mother's Day. Love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Hey, Mom, happy Mother's Day. I love you as much as I love Bull Rod. You know how much I love Bull Rod, and um, I wouldn't have this opportunity without you. So, happy Mother's Day. Ty, as you now know, first Mother's Day at your household. I'm sure Jewel is enjoying it. Not because you're gone, but because, of course, <laughs> of, of the obvious. Yeah. But the premise you work oh, off of, right, is oh. that we can never thank our mothers enough. That's right. Both my mother and the mother of my child. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to both of them. Happy Mother's Day to all of our fans out there. That was a quick look at our standings. We've now had four men go two for two, led by Valderon and Shane Proctor is trying to get his first score of the weekend. And this is his last weekend here, Ty, for a while. He's run out of injury exemptions. I spoke with him earlier in the locker room. He's not just resigned to the fact, but confident in the fact that he won't be gone for very long. He's a guy that can go down to the touring pro level and dominate and be back soon. You know, that that is sport, and, and that is definitely this sport. You know, you're looking at last year's PRCA world champion bull rider, and he has been struggling a lot here of late since coming back and, and you know coming back from the injury it's taking him a little while to get things back on track but shane has a great attitude and that's that's what's going to help him through this and i liked your comment last week when you talked to him he said he's not blaming it at all on the injuries he just feels like he hasn't busted the rust off fast enough and hey that's what at this level you have to do you have to come back ready to face the biggest bulls in the business. This is Merlot Man, one from Julio Moreno. Well, it should be around to the left, and that's all that Shane is, has been on him uh, once before, and I think he said the bull bucked him off in about six seconds, but he feels that this will be a good challenge for him here today, and that's why he picked him. We should make note that JB, his brother-in-law, is there helping him, injured hand, injured hand and all. Well, that's a good send-off for Proctor, and something for him to hang his hat and helmet on as he leaves the Built Ford Tough Series. A great ride. That's going to challenge for the lead in the round. You know, and this this just shows what, you know, him and his good attitude and not getting too down and not, you know, not going into that head game thing where you start trying to fix things that aren't even broken. You know, he just, when I'd see him in the locker room, he would stay upbeat and he would say, hey, it's going to come back. I just got to keep getting on. That's first in the round, a whopping 88 points. He's with Leah. What will this do to your motivation working your way back? Man, it just keeps me going stronger week in and week out. I know I can ride. I know I can do it. I got a lot of people supporting me, a lot of family members here. And it's just great that, uh, you know, I got that bull covered. Blue Emi has helped me a bunch, and uh, we'll just keep on trucking. We'll see you soon. Craig. He does it again, Ty. Jared Farley. One of our home run hitters and the bullfighters do their job after Farley just gets dumped onto the dirt. Yeah, he hit the ground really hard, and you can see, I mean, it was all he could do to crawl out of there. This is a nice bull ride. You see this bull's bringing it pretty hard into his hand, and I mean, Jared Farley loves to open up with that outside leg. That's his favorite thing, and you can see the amount of force he hits the ground with. Boy, the bullfighters, you just could not thank these guys enough. Look at Jesse Burns step into position right here. Frank Newsom as well, and I'm telling you, there ain't a lot of room in there. And if you've never been to a Built Ford Tough Series event live before, when you see this up close and personal, that's when you see how big, strong, and powerful this game is. Shorty, you guys always talk about the bubble 
and how it's your area. That time the bubble got very small. Yeah, it did, but that, you know, that's where you like it. It's, it's like if you're six feet and out, you're, you're kind of in a danger zone. And when you get inside there, you feel like you're more in control. That's where you want to be. That deal right there, you know, it worked out just how we wanted it to. Get in, get a hold of them, keep your hands on them the whole time you got control. Great job by you guys as always. Ty Pazabon against Knight Rider 6. Pazabon gets tossed and brought over the front end. He'll sit on one score, and his chances of making the Built Ford Tough Championship round disappear. This is a bull that changed up his normal deal. He's usually to the left right there, and you saw him. He took a pretty good look at it, and for whatever reason, he decided that today, no, nah, he'd have a better chance going to the right, and it looked like the bull made the right call. With Pazabon hitting the dirt, we still only have four men who are two for two. The leader of them all is our current world number one. Valderon has been on top of the standings for eight weeks this season. He hope it all translates in October to his first ever gold buckle. Still to come, defending champion Silvano Alves takes the stage. Alves has shown he's almost superhuman. So fun to watch this guy ride. The defending PBR world champion goes back to back. Don't count out Silvano Alves. When the PBR continues on CBS Sports Network. Let's jump in the time machine, head back two years. Silvano Alves' first event ever tie, he won it. Yeah, I mean, that, talk about making a statement that he was here and everybody was gonna have to deal with him. First rattle out of the box, and I mean, that one there bucks hard both directions. I don't know if you could see, but I had our staff take note of his back number, 467. He's never gonna have a number <laughs> like that again, is he, Ty? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Our past winners here in Boise, Silvano Alves, we just noted Wiley Peterson, who officially announced his retirement a few weeks ago, and now also won here, the Idaho native. And look, you're even on that list, my that friend. That was a long time ago, too. That is going Oof. back. That's a few wrinkles ago, wasn't it? <laughs> That's right. That was pre-glasses. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long time illustrious list right there that you're on and you are on many lists of that so we take a look at our section three lineup brought to you by armor all it will start with our defending pbr world champ silvano alves as well as 2004 pbr world champ mike lee will follow him out of the shoots before they all go here's leah craig ty murray often talks about a story of the razor jim sharp right before his prca world championship where he was eating a hot dog before the event well silvano prior to tonight's ride was um, eating a hamburger, very relaxed in the locker room, and I asked him if he wants to do any other warm-ups besides eating, and he was just perfectly relaxed and said, no, I was just hungry. So he, we talk about his focus and we talk about that, but it's also important to note how calm he is before the event. He doesn't get himself all hyper. Uh, ben Jones will talk about that later on when he rides, but this is the polar opposite of Ben. To Leah's point, Ty, we see this again. We always talk about other sports and how we can compare bull riding to them. The greats in any sport know when to flip the switch and when not it's in terms of wasting energy or simply putting that focus on. It. Well, and I think if you take 10 different guys, they're going to have 10 different ways of going at it. And, you know, the funny thing about this sport is it is so dangerous. And you've got to learn how to take fear and channel it in different ways, whether it's an adrenaline or just get control of it or block it out or, or whatever it is you do. And I think that's one of Silvano's strengths is he is such a calm guy. You don't ever see him get flustered. You don't ever see him get excited. He just very calmly keeps putting his body into a position that counteracts what the bull's trying to do to get him off of his back over and over and over. And he does it, you know, we talk about to be a champion, you've got to string great rides together. Nobody does that any better than Savannah. He's ridden eight of his last 10, including a ride earlier today in the 15-15 bucking battle aboard Megaton for 88 points. There's his good friend Fabiano Vieira. He's having a solid season as well. He missed a few weeks early on because of visa issues, now sits eighth in the world. Silvano, number two in the world standings. We've already seen Valderon ride. Valderon is a two for two for the weekend, so Silvano needs to ride to match him to keep pace in that world title chase. Yeah, 
Shorty, what are you hearing down there? Why is this taking so long? Well, Craig, this little bully likes to, to stay way up in the front of the shoe, sometimes stick his nose out of that little gate in front of me. Uh, when he does that, he doesn't leave the, the gate cleanly. So the stock contractor has actually asked that they try to get the bull back before he nods his head. That's what they're waiting on. Uh, this is one of the instances where the rider and the stock contractor are working together to try to get the best out of this bull. I think, Ty, you could hold up one hand and you might not even get past three fingers as to riders that could handle a move like he just did aboard Angry Box. Yeah, you know, <laughs> this guy is incredible. And, and look at when this bull stumbles, how far into his hand he is. And then watch the adjustment he makes with his outside leg. He just drops it back down, <laughs> gets it where it needs to be. You know, it's incredible. Look at this. Look how far up this leg comes. Look at as the bull's going down. You know, look how far down he is. His right foot even hit the ground. Now look at him drop that leg right back down and just get it right back into place. Set back in the middle. I'm telling you, this guy is unbelievable. There's a reason he's the world champion, and there's a reason he's the biggest threat to be a to be a world champion again this year. He, he slots in right behind Valderon in the standings. This is Mike Lee up against Shockwave. It's been two seasons since we have seen Mike Lee win an event on the Bill Ford Tough Series, but this weekend, Ty, he has put the full package together. Yeah, he looks back on his game to me. I mean, this is the second great ride we're seeing him make, and this is a strong bull that keeps changing things up, getting out there to it, and then when he comes around, he means it. And you just see how easy Mike, Mike Lee makes it look. He's never out of position. He's never on the end of his arm. You never see him getting whipped back. He just sets up there. It's been a while since we've seen this celebration. I don't even know what you call that. That's just kind of a part of a flip, land on your a back. A flop. A flop. Maybe yeah. a front flop. <laughs> I'm not sure. We'll come up with a better name, hopefully, by the time the Bill Tortell Championship round comes along. Mike Lee moves into third overall. Now it's time for Marco Aguche to go for his second score of the weekend. He's aboard Juice, and he just got slammed into the sheets. Let's check him with Leah. Marco is the winner from the event that we had in Sacramento, and I talked to him before tonight, and he was telling me that he doesn't feel that he's riding any differently than he was when he won that event in Sacramento. And then I worked with him and talked about the fatigue factor that happens at stop number 18, which is where we are, and he said that he doesn't feel it at all, and I sincerely believe that that's the truth. He's young, he's enthused, he has so much drive, and he's not feeling the aches and pains that some of the other veteran riders are. You're right, Leah, he's only 22 years of old. At 22 years, you don't feel much at all, but all you needed to do was point out to him the standings. There is something a little bit different than getting a first in Sacramento. He's been 12th the last three events in a row, which is very surprising. He's mixed a round win in here or there, but he's had a number of buck-offs, which we didn't see him do early on in the season. Against Juice Ty, this is a pretty good bull. Yeah, this bull should be, you know, he's out of a left-hand delivery, but he'll kind of follow the end of that gate around and probably be around to the right, kind of right up against the fence. He's kind of a big, strong bull, but I think he has a good chance of fitting Marco. For more on the bull, let's go back to Leah. This is one of Mike White's bulls who's roping in the arena now, and Mike's pretty excited about the matchup because he wants to see this bull go to the full eight seconds to see what he's made out of. I think Mike White is going to be happy. 3.8 seconds. Marco, in terms of the world standings, is in sixth. I mentioned the number of round wins Ty he's had throughout the season, but this bull made him look silly. Yeah, this bull's, the, you know, look at this funky move right here and talk about change things up and get him really far into his hand and then whip him out away from his hand, and he's just now getting warmed up. You know, he didn't even make it to the turn back. I'm kind of with Mike White. That bull looks awfully impressive. I'd like to see it keep going because it seemed to me it was just going to get better and better. 
and it isn't going to get much better for PBR fans. We've got our world number one and world number two sitting first and second. That's Silvano Alves, our defending PBR world champ, trying to go back to back for the first time in this league's history. And then, of course, you have Valderon on the right-hand side of your screen, hoping to win his first ever gold buckle. For bull riding fans, this is like seeing Kobe and LeBron go at it week in and week out. The PBR is one of the fastest growing sports on social media, and we want you to join in on the fun. Like PBR on Facebook to get involved behind the scenes. Subscribe to PBR on YouTube to get footage you can't get anywhere else. And follow at PBR on Twitter to win prizes. Join the conversation and tweet us as well. A lot happening here in Idaho this weekend. The leaderboard looks like this. Six men are a perfect two for two, headlined by world number one Valderon de Oliveira and his closest challenger in the overall standings, defending PBR world champ Silvano Alves. Ben Jones gets a chance now on Funeral Wagon. Shorty, what do you know about this matchup? I don't know anything. I just asked uh, Chad Berger where this bull came from. He's a really pretty bull. You don't get to see very many bulls that look like this. Just bought the bull out of Louisiana. Uh, but you know, Ben's another one of those guys that uh, will just fall off of one and then come right to rank one. So just depends on who showed up today. We might see, get to see Ben Jones dance. I sure hope so, because as many times as I've seen it, I still giggle every time. I was just going to say, whenever we see Ben dance, Shorty, it brings a smile to your face, doesn't it? It does, and I, I think it brings a smile to everybody's face. How could you not love Ben Jones? And... Uh, <laughs> You know, the great thing about him, you know when he's up, you know when he's down. He doesn't hide that from anybody uh, as much as he may want to. He, he wears his emotions on his sleeve, and I think it's a great, he, he's been a great asset bull ride, I think. Ty, earlier we talked about riders and how they view HD Page and, and, and their group. The same could be said about Chad Berger and Dakota Rodeo. Yeah, this bull's supposed to be the real deal right there to the left. Ty, we talked about it last week when Ben went four for four. This really looks like a completely different Ben Jones. The amount of control he just had on that bull, we've rarely seen from him. Just dominant, you know, and, and when Ben look, you know, when Ben has been in his moments where he's riding good, this is what we see from him. And and right now looks as good as we've ever seen him look. And, if he can just keep this going, I know he's been spending a lot of time with the Brazilians, and, and you know maybe maybe that's something that seems to be helping Ben. He just needs to keep it going because when he rides up to his potential, he is definitely a threat. 87 and three quarters, and he's with Leah. You had a game plan going in. What'd you do? Hang on again, Leah. Um, you know, like Glaring me, Glaring talked to me today and got it back up top, so. You might have been in a bit more of a hurry yesterday. You slowed things down today? Yeah, I blew my head out yesterday and Glaring just said regather. <laughs> Craig. Thank you. Well, the regathering worked and he wasn't kidding. Not only did he blow his head out yesterday, but he was bucked off very quickly, two plus seconds. And Ty, when we watched that ride, you both. Both of us looked at each other and went, wow, he was nowhere near where he needed to be. Today, the exact opposite. For Seve Taturo, he could get a second score here aboard Whirlwind. Yeah, this bull's probably going to go both directions, and, and nobody's sure which way he's going to go first. But if he goes to the left, he's going to be back to the right, and if he goes to the right, he's going to be back to the left. Taturo, a late replacement for Robson Palermo. Credit Jesse, Frank, and Shorty for drawing that bull's attention away from Taturo, who dropped inside, came back over the side of the bull. The touch was officially at 5.2. Now, I'll show you something interesting with this bull. Most of the time, when a bull has you out of position, they're not going to come back into you like this bull does. And Shorty talks about this bull being mean. That's what causes it. Look when he gets Seve whipped way down here on the side, then he comes back into him. That's because he's wanting to hook him. 
You know, most of these bulls, they're just wanting to get guys off their back. When they feel them to the outside like that, they're just gonna tighten up that spin and whip them out of there. That was like when you throw the, when you cast off and you're trying to catch your fish, you feel it hook the mouth and then you pull back really fast. That's what Whirlwind was trying to do with Sebi right there, was hook <laughs> that right. rider big time. Harv Stewart, meanwhile, a chance for his second score. Ty, you've had your bull riding schools. I know people ask you for advice all the time, but if you were gonna put together a tutorial DVD, Harv Stewart's ride just then would be on how to handle a direction change. This is what Harv can do, and this looks very Mike Lee. You know, he just sets up there and makes it look so easy. If you watch just this bull, I mean, he's doing everything. Big jumps, big kicks, both directions, and Harv just could not make it look more simple. He's just setting up there in perfect position. He needs to tattoo this on his brain, everything about it, the way it felt, the, what he did before and what he did after, and just keep doing it over and over all year long. He needed 86 and a half. He got 86 and three quarters. And just like that, we have a new leader here in Boise. Harv Stewart has never won an event on the Built Ford Tough Series. He's given himself a great chance this weekend. Still to come, L.J. Jenkins. Jenkins sits in second right now. This is his chance. L.J. Jenkins is going to be your winner in Kansas City. As the PBR rides on from Boise, Idaho. The danger of this sport entered my mind every single time I did it. And, you know, I probably rode 6,000 head in my career. And just like Luke's an athlete and Ty was an athlete, these bulls are athletes, or they're not gonna be at this level. I remember when I was a little kid, and uh, we would be at a roping or something, or, or whatever, even in town, and there'd be a car wreck. Well, most people were running that way, and I was always running two wreck. In this sport, you only get paid eight seconds, and if you're 7.9, you're going home with a big zero. Dangerous game inside PBR debuts next Sunday, May 20th at 3 p.m. on the CBS Sports Network for the roundtable discussion. I was joined by four of Bull Riding's most notable names, nine-time world champ Ty Murray, PBR Bull Rider Luke Snyder, Bull Fighter Shorty Gorham, and two-time stock contractor of the year Jeff Robinson. That'll be next Sunday at 3 right here on the CBS Sports Network. We continue with section number four here this weekend in Idaho. Going to start off with one of our more talented riders, LJ Jenkins against Jello. We'll check in with our winner a couple weeks ago, Lachlan Richardson as well. In terms of the event, Harv Stewart, a few moments ago, moved to the lead, trying to win his first ever Built Ford Tough Series event just ahead of Valderon and Silvano. Before we get this Armor All section going, though, let's check in with Leah, who's got an update on Nathan Shopper. Nathan is sitting fifth in the standings. He came out after his last ride and he was holding his bicep. And I said, what's wrong? And he said, I tore my bicep. And I said, how do you know? And he goes, oh, I know. He went back to sports medicine. Dr. Tandy Freeman confirmed that he indeed tore it from the bone. He is going to get on the championship round. He says he's going to give it a try. Afterwards, he will need surgery and he'll probably be out for six months. Oh, yeah, I, I, Leah, well, we'll get to that in a second. This is LJ on Jello. LJ came into the weekend third overall in the world, and that ride right there, Ty, is an example why. Yeah, LJ, you know, I mean, this guy can do it. Look how he never takes big holds, holds with his spurs. He just does everything with his upper body. You see him opening up with that outside leg. He could do this all day long. Ty, I just want to go back to what Leah was saying about Nathan Shopper. It was funny how it was just a, oh, by the way, he's going to get into the Bill for Tough Championship round, but then he's going to be out for a few months. Yeah, yeah, he tore his bicep completely off the bone, but he'll be riding again but, here in a but, few minutes. But he'll be back, yeah. Yet another example of, indeed, we do have the toughest athletes on the planet competing in this sport. That ride from LJ Jenkins is going to slot him into sixth. This is Aaron Roy looking for his second score. And it's a quick buck off for Aaron. That only lasts 2.4, and that means his weekend is over. Look at the amount of kick that this bull has whenever we get a chance to take a look at this replay. 
Davis. You know, when he leaves out of here, you talk about just get straight up steep right there. And you can see how it straightens his arm out, whips this arm back behind him. You can see all the weight now is shifted over here to this leg. So as that bull comes around to the left, it's going to be hard to make that corner. Boss Hogg showing Roy who's boss. It's been a pretty good season for Aaron Roy so far, but his weekend is over, and he'll get to watch like the rest of us to find out who will win here in Boise. Caleb Sanderson aboard Pistol Whip. We just saw the flags fly, which means the rewrite option will be given to Caleb Sanderson, and when we took and came back to the video, Pistol Whip was throwing in an odd maneuver there, Ty. Yeah, you'll see this bully. Falls all the way down, stops his movement, you know, and it takes him a little while to get back going again. And that's kind of the criteria that the judges use for when a bull falls, because sometimes a bull slips and, you know, he might go down a little bit, but just carry right on. And so the criteria that they, that they use is if it stops the bull's momentum or motion, and that clearly did. Emilio Resende is in the midst of a resoundingly successful rookie season. Last night, he won his second round of the year. And with first pick in the draft today, he chose Redman. Redman was the bull that helped him win round number one back in Glendale earlier this year. Yeah, Uncle, Uncle Phil was good. I got all my balls rode and ended up winning. Um, yeah, it's good to be consistent that weekend. I didn't really know if I'd win it until the last bit when I rode my fourth ball, but yeah, that's what I went there to do, and it worked out good. There's a lot more attention, I guess, and media going into Billings, but it was something different, and I had three good balls. They were just a bit tough for me on the day, I guess. I started them really good. I just didn't finish my rides off. In this sport, tie, you fall both literally and figuratively, and that truth booth just bringing light to the fact of how quickly it all can change on this tour. Well, you know, this is a young kid that, you know, bursts onto the scene and wins his first Built Ford Tough Series event ever in Uncasville, and then, you know, all the eyes turn to him, and what's he going to do next? And it's a lot of pressure for a young guy, and the, the thing of it is, is I think he handles it very well. You know, you can see by all of his interviews, every time he's talked to, he's a very calm kid that is very concise and to the point in what he's trying to say, and and, I, you know, I think we're going to see him find his feet again. You know, he, he has the talent. He showed us that. It's just a matter of, you know, when you get up to this level, it's the best guys and the best bulls every single time you nod your head. And I'm telling you, it's hard to, to learn how to hit a home run every time at this level. He hit four two weeks ago in Connecticut. In terms of the rookies this year, four men, four different countries trying to win that title. A couple weeks ago in Connecticut when we saw him go for it for four tie, there were some instances where he was a little bit out of control, but he found his center and was able to salvage the rides. Since then, it seems he's gotten out of position and been unable to figure it out. Yeah, and stepping up to these bulls, you can see how he's rocked into his hand and he goes to the end of his arm and then it jerks him forward. That's what's causing his feet to whip back right here because he's not getting forward when the bull's jumping. He's getting jerked forward from the previous kick and that's a timing issue. You know, that's something that he's gonna, that he knows that he's gonna have to work on. Lachlan goes 0 for 2 this weekend. Official buck off time in round two, 2.16 seconds. Next up in the shoots, Fabiano Vieira came into the weekend in eighth overall, about 2,000 points behind his compatriot Valderon. He did very well in the 15-15 bucking battle earlier today, riding Cooper Tires Gray Ghost for 90 and a quarter. In this round, he goes up against DNH Cattle Company's trainable. Yeah, imagine if this guy wouldn't have had visa problems this year and would have been here for a full season because I think this is another one of those guys that's just really opened everybody's eyes to... I think he's as big a threat as, as, as any of the Brazilians. I'll put him right there with Silvano, right there with Valderon. Uh, this guy's tough, Craig. 
a little glimpse into the uh, life of Fabiano outside the arena when we were all flying to Denver last week after the event. Silvano and Guilherme Marchi said to me as I was sitting next to Fabiano, they said, be careful when the plane takes off. He gets very, very nervous. This guy, Fabiano, had to shut down the window shade. He absolutely couldn't stand to look outside the vehicle, so, or I should say the airplane. So it's funny that he'll ride a bull, no problem, but taking off and landing in a plane is not to his liking. Trainable says, how about a little something to remember me by? Scoots Fabiano out of the way. The touch was at 3.91. The headbutt was at about four and a half. Yeah, you want to see how strong these bulls are. Watch. You know, and this bull isn't even trying to hook him. He's just spinning. But watch how far it sends him out of there. <laughs> bull said, here, you better get over there where it's safe because it's getting rough right here. Yeah, I don't want you inside this spin any longer than you have to be. That was some momentum. Vieta, meanwhile, will go 0 for 2 here in Boise. But again, a great job earlier today in that 15-15 bucking battle. Round one winner, Emilio Resende gets his chance. He had first pick in the draft. He chose a bull he's faced before the last time these two met. It was a whopping 89 and a half points tie. Resende in the locker room told me earlier today he knew he wanted a bull that went to the right, and he knew he would get that bull in Redman. Yeah, this should be just a no-brainer. This is a really good bull. Going to be out there a couple of jumps and around to the right. He's got good jump, good kick, good timing. He ought to be able to knock it out of the park on this one. <laughs> Nothing is a given in this sport. That ride showed just that. Resende gets a little bit out of position, Shorty, and then it was just a matter of time. Yeah, you know, that, that bull is a great bull, but that just goes to show. If, if my memory serves me correctly, that was actually the first bull that he got on when he got over here to the States in, in, the, in the Bill Ford Tough Series. And uh, yep. he had his way with him that time, but the bull won this one. His 88 and a half points has given him a slim chance to make it back to the Build for Tough Championship round, he still sits in ninth, but you can bet that will be remembered as a lost opportunity. Meanwhile, for Harv Stewart, opportunity is knocking. The Bad Boy Mower lead dog has never won an event on the Build for Tough Series. He's come in second twice, but today might be his day. Still to come, fan favorite J.B. Mooney, who last week rode gunpowder and lead with the opposite hand. Look at that! His first qualified ride as a right-hander. As the PBR rides on from Boise, Idaho. J.B. Mooney hoping to make some money aboard Push It. He had that score in the 15-15 bucking battle aboard Bad Blake. And during our meeting today, Ty, we, we crunched the numbers a little bit. It's incredible to think with the three rides that JB has had since coming back and riding with his right hand, he's made over 550 points. Now, that's almost as much as an event win. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. And it just shows, you know, I'm so impressed with this guy. You know, I thought it's a bad call. And, you know, I thought it just increased his chances for getting hurt and you know it shows how bad this guy wants a world championship it shows how much how talented he is uh how much grit he has you know at this level to, to be able to change hands and get three qualified rides two of those qualified rides coming in the 15 15 bucking battle very very impressive this is Push It. He told me earlier he simply chose this bull because of its name and because it came from the pages. Here's Leah. Let's go back to JB's record. For six consecutive weeks, he held the lead in the season standings, lost it to Valderon, and then right after Kansas City, well, he grabbed it back the week before, and then Valderon has it again. So it's really important to note how much he and Valderon are fighting for the number one position in the world standings, which at the end of the year will equate to a gold buckle. Back to those point totals. That's exactly why these guys are coming back as injured as they are. We can't say it enough or emphasize it enough. They know exactly what is at stake. And Ty, I liked in one of your podcasts, we may not get to continue talking about this if JB goes, but I like, uh, we'll talk about it in a second. Here's JB and pushing.
He took a hit right there. The helmet pops off. But Mooney pops up. You know, and this is this is what I have worried about. And JB's such a tough guy, and you know, we've seen him take some bad blows. And you know, who's to say a guy, you know, this is a dangerous sport no matter which hand you ride with, but to me you're just increasing your chances when you change hands. And it knocks this helmet off with so much force. Boom. I mean, he takes three pretty good hits to the head right there. And Ooh, the, you know, it's so tough, but at the same time, you know, he has been able to gather over 550 points that he wouldn't have got if he would have just been sitting at home waiting for that hand to heal. Jordan Hupp with his chance aboard Stanley Bostich for a quake. Hupp's got a score on the board. It was 83 and a quarter from round one in Jailhouse Rock. <laughs> When Jordan Hupp is on, Ty, few guys ride away from their hand as well. Yeah, and you know, watch on this replay. Keep an eye on his left foot. Now that's your inside foot. The centrifugal force is to the right. Look how he never turns that toe out. But the reason he can do that is because your spurs are secondary. He's doing things right with his upper body. This spur never touches this bull, but when you keep making the right adjustments, moving forward in the jump and around there to the left in the kick in perfect timing like that. You don't even need spurs. Hupp able to slot in behind Nathan Shopper. That means Emilio Resende, our round one winner, is now in the bubble with one score, 88 and a half. This is Caleb Sanderson and his re-ride bull, Whoopa Cocktail. I like that name, Whoopa Cocktail. <laughs> Should be around to the right. Around to the right with conviction, whoop a cocktail like a blender, just mixing Caleb Sanderson up, but Sanderson had the answer. Really a good ride for Caleb, and you know, Caleb's another one of those guys that I talk about on the tour that is so tall. You know, he is, this is like seeing a 6'5 gymnast. You just don't see him, and, and you know, he rides like a little guy. Look at him making all the right moves. He doesn't look like a big, lanky, clumsy guy. Has control of his body. Good way for Sanderson to end the weekend. That slots him into 15th. He will not be a part of the Built for Tough Championship round. But as our bad boy mower lead dog, Harv Stewart, at the moment, would have first pick in that championship round. Only a few more rides to wait through before Harv Stewart gets his chance to pick the bull that will win him his first ever Built for Tough Series event. Sad news to report earlier this week, Mossy Oak Mudslinger Ty passed away, but it is safe to say that this was one of those bulls everybody wanted to get on. Yeah, and this bull was so good for so long. Here we're taking a look at Corey McFadden on him. This was the highest score ever produced on him. What a great ride. And this was Mike Lee at the 2004 PBR World Finals, helping Mike Lee to his only world title. Yeah, you know, for a bull to be that good for that long, so much money was won on this bull. Look at that. Out of 93 outs, 23 were for plus 90, and 15 of them were round wins. That's most of all time. A money bull, if there ever was one, the 2006 World Champion Bucking Bull helped sire a lot of bulls that we've seen throughout the years, but unfortunately, as I mentioned, passed away earlier this week, and it'll be fun to follow his lineage throughout history, but one of the greats. Checking in now with Ryan Dirtyder aboard Firestorm. Dirtyder has had an excellent weekend after being forced to sit out last weekend because of his concussion. Dr. Tandy Freeman deciding for health reason it would not be good. Speaking with Ryan throughout this weekend, he said he feels fresh, Ty. He feels rested up, and his riding shown that. Yeah, you can see him making a last-minute adjustment. You saw where he pulls that rope around to the loop on the end, and, you know, you... That, that loop is adjustable, so on a small bull, you make it a great big loop, and on a little bull, it's, it's a small loop to make the rope longer. And, you know, usually that's done in the back when you first put your rope on, you, you get it adjusted perfectly, so when you get in the chute, you're ready to roll. As he started pulling his rope, 
Maybe he had it adjusted a little bit too long. He had to take it up a little bit so that, when, and what I'm saying too long is when you take that tail of that rope across your hand, you want the part of the tail that you've rosined to be what goes in your hand. If you're just joining us, Harv Stewart is, is in the lead, trying to win his first ever event. Our world number one and two sit second and third in the overall standings. Yet another great job by Ryan Dirt Eater to match a bull move for move. Two good scores already this weekend. This will tickle the great category. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of good rides here this weekend. And, you know, you look at this bull, Ryan, you just can't, you, you can't pick this apart in any way. I mean, he just looks perfect on that bull. He squeezed every ounce that he could get out of him. Earlier today, five out of the seven rides in the 15-15 bucking battle were for 90 or more. Ryan Dirtier adds another 90-point score. Doesn't get a lot of points for that get-off, but it's safe, or he is safe, and that is all that matters. So Dirtier will move into second overall in the event with a chance for a great pick in the Built Ford Tough Championship round draft. We now move on to Stormy Wing, who tied for that win in the 15-15 bucking battle board train wreck. He wasn't left with many bulls. He said that he maybe had three to choose from, and he took White Wolf. Yeah, I couldn't find out. I couldn't find one guy in the locker room that knew anything about this bull. And Stormy Wing's ride in the 15-15 was the best ride that I've seen here all week so far. I thought it just looked perfect. And if he can carry that kind of momentum forward, doesn't really matter what this bull does. He's got the momentum, at least in his head, Ty. You talked earlier with the rider saying you got to remember, I think it was Harv Stewart saying you got to remember everything about the ride. That's what Stormy said he wants to do with his 15-15 bucking bull ride aboard train wreck. That's the best score he'd ever had on the Built for Tough series, and he aims to repeat it here. White Wolf had a different idea. Enough action side to side to finally force Stormy Wing off. Yeah, you see him get it. You know, watch as this bull comes around and he kind of gets in there further than he wants to be. He has to reach across the front of that bull to make a big move and he gets a little further out of there than he wants to be. And then it just becomes a trying to play catch up. At the very beginning of the show, Leah commented on Austin Meyer and why he did not take his re-ride. He hurt his ribs in round number one. That meant he kept a score of 68 and a half. We're gonna find out whether or not that comes back to bite him because he's on the bubble. At 153 and a half, Luke Snyder doesn't need many points at all aboard Dark Shadow, and he will knock Austin Meyer out of the Built for Tough Championship round. But Snyder needs to ride to make it into the top 10. Yeah, Luke took a big time crash and he said he didn't feel great today. We'll see if he can put that pain aside for eight seconds. A great correction at five seconds kept that ride alive. Luke's success means that Austin Meyer will be out of the Built Ford Tough Championship round, but we'll see how high in that top 10 Luke goes. Wow, 90 points. You know, we got to remember that Luke Snyder had that straight for consecutive events, and he's a tough guy. You know, his knee is really bunged up right now. I've seen it in the Justin Sports Medicine room, and you know how, how blown up his knee was and how much fluid was on it, and then the crashing that he took. Luke's able to go to work every day, though, and I talk about putting that pain aside for eight seconds. That's a guy that can do it. At the top of our leaderboard, it is a veritable who's who. Their best of friends on the left, Harv Stewart, will have first pick in the Built for Tough Championship draft. Meanwhile, Austin Meyer, one of our perennial favorites, just got knocked out. This week on the Built Ford Tough Team Invasion, Luke and Brendan loaded up their Ford Super Duty and got a little surprise from some of Idaho's finest.
this week's Bill Pork Tough Invasion, thanks to a little help from Shorty Gorm, me and Brendan got punked. We're just outside of Boise, Idaho. We're going to the Owyhee River Potato Farm. That's right, Luke. This week we bought out Super Duty. Yeah. It's pulling me over. I need to see license, registration, insurance from everybody in here. Did we do something wrong? Yeah, we'll get to that in just a minute, okay? Where's this Owyhee Potato Farm? Is it in Owyhee County or? Ooh. GPS says we're right here at it. There's not a potato farm in the at all. You guys have the registration? Or? Yeah, I mean, we're looking for it. I could have swore it was in here. I need to have you shut the truck off for me. Thank you, Chris. Come on, man. There, boys, you have a little trouble? How'd you do that? <laughs> Yeah, but the best part about it, we got our heart racing twice. We got to hang out with the Meridian Police Department and the k unit. The dog comes at you, you're gonna, you're gonna present um, your upper body. They're trained um, to bite <laughs> what's presented to them. So um, if you stick a leg out, he'll take your leg. If you stick an arm, he'll probably take an arm. All of these dogs are dual purpose canines. And so they're trained in uh, narcotic detection work and then also in the apprehension of criminals. The dogs go home with us every day. They stay at our house, they become part of the family and and they become our, our best backup out on the street. All right, Shorty, well, thanks a lot, I think, for uh, setting up a great day with the Meridian Police Department and the K-9 unit. We had ourselves a ball. Yeah, and Shorty, as you know, the year is only halfway through, and guess what? Your time's coming. Ha <laughs> ha, let the games begin. Go to FordInvasion.com to find where Brennan, Luke, and the rest of Team Invasion will be next. You can also enter for your chance to win a trip to the Built Ford Tough World Finals in Las Vegas and the 2012 F-150 SVT Raptor, just like the one the guys used this week. It's all at FordInvasion.com. And there's Officer Dan Vogt, one of the gentlemen who helped set that up. Great to have him here. I still think he should have fined Luke for that mustache. But that's a whole nother story. Meanwhile, we've got the Built Ford Tough Championship round around the corner. Harv Stewart will have first pick in the draft. Ryan Dirtyter closely follows him. In fact, the top six men within two points. Bring It has helped bring riders to the pay window more this season than any other. But his past two outs have seemed, he seemed to lose a step. So he'll get the chance to right the ship soon enough. bringing up to speed in week number 18. We've talked about Valderon riding two for two so far this weekend. J.B. Mooney, of course, that amazing third ride with his opposite hand. Five out of seven of the rides earlier today in the 15-15 bucking battle were for 90 points or higher. And SmackDown once again showing that he is absolutely in the running for world champion bucking bull. One man who is not in round number two is former defending PBR world champ, Guilherme Marchi. Here's Leah with more. Guilherme took a hard hit yesterday. He was knocked out in the arena and he suffered a concussion and also had some stitches put in his chin. He originally drew a bull for tonight's competition, Dark Shadow. Came here with full intention of riding, but Dr. Tandy Freeman gave him some tests and said, no, you will not ride today. He will go and see Tandy next week in Dallas on Tuesday or Thursday to determine whether or not he's fit to ride in Pueblo. We all saw Galerme earlier, and he did feel he was going to be in the lineup. Disappointed that he could not get his chance. We take a look at our Armor All Section 2 lineup. It's going to start with our world number one, Valderon, as well as Nathan Shopper, who's going for his second score of the weekend. Great to see Brendan Clark in the mix, who took advantage of being a late entry here and got a qualified ride in round number one. He's also here in section number two, but it all begins, Ty, with the guy who really has stepped up this week. He called Leah, remember, last week during the show, and it killed him to be watching at home because Tandy kept him out because of that concussion. He's making up for lost time here. Well, he is, and, you know, and he seems right on track, and he seems very focused, and, and nothing's going to... It seems that nothing is going to stand in his way in his, in his bid for a world championship this year. It's kind of an interesting uh, pick, this Jack Black. This is a bull that's strong and, and kind of out of line. Nobody's real positive what he's going to do. I mean, I, I would never bet against Valron because I think he can ride any of them, but this is just an interesting pick in my book. 
Hey, Shorty, I'm going to take Ty's comment a step further. This bull's only been ridden twice in 39 outs. Are you surprised Valderon picked this one? Well, I haven't looked at the stats, Craig, but I don't know if this bull's had Valderon or not yet. He might change that. No, I'm not surprised. This guy can ride anything. I asked him today how he felt last night. He said, oh, I look a little bit ugly, but I felt good riding. I jokingly told him, I said, you weren't very pretty when it started. Don't worry about it. <laughs> An appropriate comment from Shorty Gorham. This bull may have a lot of buck-offs, but Valderon Ty had never been on his back. That's what I say. You just can't hardly ever bet against this guy. It doesn't matter what bulls throw at him. You know, and if, if you look at this bull and the way he bucked before he turned back, that's going to have a lot of guys strung out, out of position, getting jerked around, and then by the time the spin comes, they're already, you know, out of the game. Valderon doesn't matter what the Bulls do, he just makes them all look simple, and that's the reason he's the world number one. And he moves into first. He's with Leah. Valderon, how strong is your focus? Uh, my focus, have you been good? I do uh, every day exercise, a lot of prep in my house. Every week, say my wife, say this week, and my turn, I go, I go to the event for the win. You know, I don't care. I win tech. I win poor. Every week, the same focus, Craig. Good mantra to have. Nathan Schopper hoping to do the same. This is a transformed rider, Ty. The North Dakota kid coming into this weekend, five events without a score. He went one for three last weekend in Billings. This weekend, a perfect two for two. You always talk about Austin Meyer staying in motion. That's what Shopper did here. Yeah, it looks really good. And, you know, it's got to feel good to him to get the train back on the tracks. And, you know, once you can start stringing a few qualified rides together, and you get that feel and you get the timing and the balance and the movement and all that, and then the confidence comes behind that. Uh, this young guy, he's, he's one of the bigger guys on the tour, and he's, he's looking very well. Nothing shaky about Shopper aboard Shaky Waters. 85 and a quarter moves him all the way into second in the standings. It's definitely going to take two to make it in. Brendan Clark trying to be amongst those top ten when we get to the Built for Tough Championship round. He chose night deposit. These two met before in Des Moines a few weeks ago. That weekend, the bull was better. This bull should be around to the right in Brendan's hand. And, you know, Brendan's a veteran. Sometimes he has trouble hanging on to his rope. This bull's got a real attitude when it's done, too. We're going to have to work on this one. Hey, hey. Let's try it, Frank. Clark is thrown wide. So from a safety standpoint, it's all good for the rider. But he's off at about halftime. See this bull, you, you know, usually about this point right here, he comes on around to the right. And uh, this time he's smarter than that. He made the big move to the right, then changed his mind, changed it up, and it did trick Brendan. Yesterday, Brendan got his first qualified ride of the season. Today, a buck off won't allow him to continue his weekend. Canadian Ty Pazabon chose to miss last week in order to rest up his injured knee. A second score and a trip to the Built for a Tough Championship round could make all that pain go away. Our top 10 matchups are set for the Built Ford Tough Championship round. Cody Nance will leave the shoots first on Great White. We will end it all with Harv Stewart and Double Clutch. We welcome you inside the Idaho Center and once again to the PBR's Built Ford Tough Skybox alongside nine-time world champ Ty Murray. I'm Craig Umber. Ty, I think it's safe to say you have known Harv Stewart throughout his riding career and today could finally be the day that he lives up to the potential you've seen in him all along. Well, I think this is as good a chance as he's had. You know, he's riding great this week. 
on fire. He looks perfect. And he had the first, you know, the first pick in the draft. So he got the pick on him. He got the exact bull that he wanted to have. You know, this is a kid that I've watched him grow up his whole life. And, and I've really enjoyed watching his career come along. I feel like he's finding his stride. If he, if he believes in himself as much as I believe in him, I think today could be his day. Looking to win his first ever event. A guy, Shorty, who's trying to win his third ever event is Ryan Dirt Eater, and you think he's got a good shot. Yeah, he's got Stanley Fat Max. This is a bull I have a right hand delivery. Will start either way. Probably going to go both ways. Really wild, really fast, really exciting. He's rode him before, so he's got the confidence. I think he could go all the way on this one. But before we get into action, let's go talk to Leah Garcia. Nathan Shopper is going to win the award for tough guy. He tore the muscle off of his bicep. You'll be wearing a brace. What's the motivation for riding in the championship round? Oh, it's already torn. I just, I can't screw it up anymore, and it really don't hurt that bad, so I think it'll be fine. Did the men in the back give you stories about Adriano Marias when he rode a Spitfire or Crossfire Hurricane? Yeah, I remember watching that. I asked him, I'm like, Adriano rode at the torn bicep, right? And they're like, yeah, he did, so... It'll be fine. I think we're going to hit a lot, hear a lot of bear downs from the back of the shoots, Craig. The thing uh, I think Nathan was embarrassed to add, Ty, was he watched it when he was four. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like his, you know, that's like saying, hey, my leg's already broke. It, it, Why not? <laughs> yeah, let's go for it. Cody Nance going for it here against Great White. He was the only man who did not have a pick in this round. Great White is a bull. We've seen a few times in his career on the Built Ford Tough Season. No rider has gotten it done. In fact, when you include great right whites, excuse me, whole career tie, 18 straight buck offs. Yeah, this bull really gets in there and it's gonna be either direction. You know, it's anybody's guess until he finally picks his way and there's no guarantee he's gonna stay when he goes. You know, I think this bull is pretty wild out of line, really gonna get in there and he's gonna just keep feeling for the rider and doing whatever it takes. Cody Nance, if you go back, was our 2009 Rookie of the Year. Since that year, he has shown a lot of promise. He's won an event every season, except for last year, where his best, best was Pueblo. Let's check in with Leah again. As the guys pull on that brand new uh, rope that he's got, that bull rope is made from Jared Farley, and it's brand new. He uh, had his other one almost broken last weekend, and to warm this one up, he tied it to a tractor and gave it a really good stretch. And he was pleased in the first round, really pleased in the second round when we got a score, and he's uh, trying it out again. Looks as though he's set on great white. place a lot of air in between his seat in the back of the bull tie and you know that's never going to end well yeah look at this this is a good bull right here i mean a spectacular bull and you know look at how high he gets in the air shorty did it feel like he was looking up at him the whole time that was one impressive bull right there ty absolutely uh you know you, you said it just right looking up at him the whole time like when i saw Co uh, cody get rocked back a little i was a little worried because there was a lot of elevation but to lose there, and I thought teeth were coming out on that one. Nance will end up 10th on the weekend. Next out of the shoots, a great pairing between Class 6 Cat and LJ Jenkins. This bull's only been ridden one out of his last 15 times, one of six this season. LJ trying to break the trend. Well, should be around to the right. He's probably going to jump out of it at about the seven second mark. LJ finds a way. Keep in mind, Jenkins won earlier this season in Kansas City. He's had all these top 10 performances this season, Ty, and he continues to impress. Yeah, this bull just keeps changing it up. He decides to go left first, then back right, then back left, and then back right again. You know, he gave it everything he had, and, and it's so nice to see when a guy's on top of his moves like that, how easily they handle the direction changes. Let's send it to Leah. This week you were at a bull riding school teaching some youngins how to ride. Did that help? Uh, yeah, it always helps out. Me and some buddies did it at the house. And uh, just, just to kind of re remind you of the basics and everything, it does help. And I just want to say happy Mother's Day to all the moms. Good ride. Trick. He moves into the lead. The only man three for three so far. This is Jordan Huff trying to match him. A score of 85 in the quarter will move him to the front. J.D. 
ended up going after J.H. The Bull had not only an answer for that ride, Ty, but then he sent a message afterwards. Well, this Bull has good kick when he comes around, and then you talk about fast. I mean, this one's winding it up, and I think it stunned Jordan when he hit the ground right there. Bullfighters doing a great job again, and, and as usual, take a look at Frank Newsom. Newsom hop over him right there, get that Bull's attention. That was a close call. And it's a good thing J.D.'s aim wasn't the best. He saw Jordan Hupp on the ground and thought to himself, wow, look at this target. But Hupp seems to be okay, a little phased at the moment. And now it's time for Nathan Shopper. You just heard him visit with Leah and say, why not? Why wouldn't I go for this chance? He has chosen Prince Albert. You know, we saw Cody Lostro went around on this bull last week in Billings and uh, you know, with, with Cody Lostro, he was to, to the left right there and really good. This bull has two trips. He can either do that or he can kind of be wild. We'll see which way he decides to go today. Last week, Nathan got his first qualified ride on the Bill Ford Tough Series. This week, he makes his first championship round. You have to give him all the credit in the world for stepping up and even trying that with the tear in his bicep. But right from the beginning, it seemed his body position went wrong. Now watch how hard this bull comes around right here. Boy, when he plants himself and back up underneath himself, that, you know, that was as, about as wicked around as a bull can have right there. That was hard and fast. A weekend to remember for Shopper, however, his first top 10 performance of his young career. He finishes eighth here in Boise. So it's Mike Lee's turn. The 2004 PBR World Champ chose Curveball. Curveball making his 2012 debut, but last year, Ty, no one could ride him. I think Mike Lee is on top of his game this weekend, as good as I've seen him since he was the world champion. I mean, that's what it reminds me of. That's what he looked like at the PBR finals that year. not kidding, Ty, to take your comment literally. There's the flop. <laughs> Mike Lee goes three for three. He's going to move to the lead, and it was just another dominating performance. Yeah. The, boy, when Mike Lee gets like this, he just, it doesn't matter the bull, you know. I seen him get on three bulls this week, and all of them were very strong. And he just sets up there. This one pulled on him more than the other two did, but still, you know, he stayed up front, kept control of things, and then the signature flop move. That's like when you've almost learned how to do a front flip. <laughs> Maybe Leah can find out more. Here she is. What's impressive is that Mike followed doctor's orders, and you sat out for a while to heal some knees. You come back. What would you do to prepare? I uh, decided to get serious, you know. This is not a... This is not a weak man sport. I got to take it serious as I can. I'm going to put my whole heart into it. But this is what God delivers to me. God designed me to be a warrior, so might as well use it. Craig. I think the haircut says it all. Before the break, he was had that long, shaggy do. Now he's got the shaved dome. He does mean business. Mike Lee on top, well ahead of LJ Jenkins. The PBR Built Ford Tough Series on CBS Sports Network is brought to you by Kawasaki and the 2012 Terex 4. And by Las Vegas, where what happens here stays here. Book your trip today at visitlasvegas.com. Next week, we've got a lot to bring you from the Built Ford Tough Series. Round one, you'll be able to see on May 19th. That's on the CBS Sports Network right here at 10 p.m. Eastern. Then on May 20th, it's a double dose of the baddest sport in the world. The 15-15 bucking battle will be on CBS at 2 p.m. And then we'll wind out the spring swing on CBS Sports Network at 6 p.m. These would be the projected matchups next week in Pueblo of the 15-15 bucking battle. One to note, tie Stormy Wing on Asteroid. That's a rematch from earlier this year in Atlanta. Well, and Stormy's, you know, kind of the first guy we've seen take Asteroid 
to task, and uh, I think that could be a very exciting rematch. And Valderon against SmackDown, those two met at Iron Cowboy, and that was good. Yeah, you're talking about two powerhouses going at it right there. Mike Lee, our bad boy mower lead dog, he's got the top five of the weekend to watch through to see whether or not he can hold that spot. It's been two years since we've seen Lee win. It was back in 2010 in Des Moines. But Mike has eight career victories on the Bill Ford Tough Series and, of course, that world championship in 2004. Here's our defending PBR world champ, Silvano Alves, and he chose Bring It in the draft. That's exactly what this bull is going to do. But this year, surprisingly, Ty, a lot of guys have ridden him. Yeah, this uh, Bring It, he's a smarter bull. You know, he's going to go both directions and, and possibly multiple times. You're going to probably see him just keep changing direction and, and, you know, trying to unlock the code to Silvano. This is a very smart bull that understands the game, but Silvano is a very smart rider that understands the game. Hey, Shorty, at one point in this bull's career, he had so many buck-offs. Then we saw Jordan Huff ride him in New York a couple seasons ago. Do you think this bull has lost anything? You know, I do, and that's what Cody Lambert and I were just talking about. He said he feels like any day this bull is going to stop during the ride, and uh, he's told the owners that. He said if the bull doesn't stop here, he'll, he'll quit saying that he is going to stop, but if he stops, this is the last time he's in the draw. Silvano has ridden nine out of his last 11, looking to keep the weekend perfect in Idaho. Well, how about that? Bring it does just that. Dumping our defending PBR world champ unceremoniously. That was a powerful move from Bring It. Yeah, this is a big, strong bull, and you know, he has some hesitation, and it's like he winds up, and then watch right here really a big front end movement, and then another one following right behind it. And you see that rope get pulled back about six inches. You know, there's some pressure on the end of his arm, and it does pull him forward. A rare buck off for Silvano Alves. That will leave him seventh overall on the weekend. And what that means is the window opens a little bit for our current world number one, Valderon de Oliveira. He can put more space in between Silvano, who is his closest challenger, and that number one position he's trying to protect. But before Valderon goes, we'll check in with Luke Snyder. You can see how often these two have matched up. Luke and Charlie Bullware. The bull has gotten the better of them three out of four times. <laughs> you heard Shorty say he got him road. He didn't have perfect position the whole time, Ty, but what he did do well was make the corrections when he needed to. Yeah, I thought this was a really good ride. And, you know, Luke knows he's got to stay down on this bull, and look how focused he is. He's got his chin tucked. You know, he tries to keep that arm down and out in front of him. You know, he knew exactly what he needed to do, and he executed it perfectly. And, and like I talked about earlier, Luke's pretty banged up and beat up right now, and he just toughs his way through it. He's standing by with Leah. Did you have a little extra motivation this weekend? Yes, I did. Jen flew in, and it's Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day, Mom. And uh, me and Charlie Moore were world buddies, so I love that guy. That was a great ride. Boulware helps him to his second 90-point score in a row. He won round two aboard Dark Shadow in 90. He moves to the round lead aboard Charlie Boulware and gives himself a great chance to win his first event since last year's last Cowboy standing. So now it's Valderon's turn. We've already seen Silvano buck off, so a ride here by Valderon will help him increase his lead in the overall world standings against Rocky Smooth. Ty, what do you think his chances are? Well, he's quite a bit more rocky than he is smooth. This bull has a hop and a skip, and he's, he's probably going to go both directions and just with a little bit of everything thrown in. This is the real deal right here. We could see a huge score if Valderon stays on pace the way he has been riding because, I mean, he is laser focused. And we talk about the guys, all the different guys that are wanting a world championship and how bad they want it. Well, nobody wants it any worse than Valderon. Well, we've talked all weekend long and reiterated what Valderon has told us about how he feels only two weeks after having that concussion, getting knocked out in Connecticut. We're about to find out very quickly whether everything 
is all right, because as Ty just mentioned, he's going to have to be on his game 100% to go up against a bull of the caliber of Rocky Smooth. Seven straight buck-offs for this bull. He took care of Guilherme Marchi back in Kansas City. Guilherme almost rode him to eight seconds, 7.69. A lot of chatter from his friends. Well, Shorty, what are you hearing down there? It looks like he's going to rewrap. Yeah, uh, Craig, I'm a little too far away from to here, but th this bully is just laying down. He's not really being bad in there. I think more than anything, um, and Ty could probably, you know, expand on this a little bit. I think maybe his hand was getting a little bit tired. He decided to take his hand out, let the bull stand up, get a breath, regroup, and then try at it again. Valderon making sure everything is in order against Rocky Smooth. And Ty, you have said this before about this bull. You better have all your ducks in a row when that game. Yeah, this bull is a lot more rocky than he is smooth. And he's going to have some hops and some skips. He's, he's going to go both directions. And he's going to have a lot of a little bit of everything thrown in. You know, this is a rank bull. This is the real deal. And this could be a huge score. Valderon's chance to increase his lead in the world standings. Gates open. He's off at 7.13, but that was not a good get off. We'll take another look. Well, you, you know, the, the, the fractured eye is his left eye socket. And the way it happened last time was a bull stepped on him and pushed his face into the ground. You know, it looks like a a replay of that, and he's pretty slow getting up. Oh, it almost looks like, well, we'd have to bring it in closer, but it almost looks like what happened to J.B. Mooney where the bull stepped on his hand. We'll wait for an official update, but Valderon, as we often talk about in terms of his toughness, very slow to get up. You can see Guilherme Marchi there helping Dr. Tandy Freeman and his medical staff. The bottom line is that Valderon with his buck off will end up sixth overall on the weekend just in front of Silvano. So he will gain a little bit of ground based on, not gain ground, excuse me, pad his lead a little bit based on the bonus points. But Luke Snyder, who won here back in 2008, trying to become a double winner in Idaho. Ryan Dirtyder is going to have something to say about that, as will Hart Stewart. Dirtyder had second pick in the draft. He chose Stanley Fatmax. You know, this bull is going to be around to the left, but you can't count on him staying in it. So, you know, once he's winding it up to the left, you can't just be making those giant moves around there and, and rely on him to keep coming that, that direction. Dirt Eater was the last man to ride this bull. That was in Des Moines for 87 points. They've actually met three times where Ryan's figured this bull out two out of those three times. This bull has only been ridden one out of his last seven times, but that one time was Ryan Dirt Eater in Des Moines. That time they matched up for 87 points. Go back to Thackerville of last year where Ryan did quite well. He rode this bull for 87 and a half points. Stanley Fatmax should be around to the left, but you can't count on him to stay. He's probably going to jump out of it. So, you know, the whole time you're making those moves around there to the left, it's that fine line. Of, you've also got to be ready for him to shoot forward and change it up. Shorty, how's this bull for you guys once the ride ends? This bull's a lot of fun for us. This bull, he's real small, he's real fast, and he's real mean, so you got to be on your toes. He knows the game. <laughs> Ryan Dirtyder takes a love tap to the helmet, which pops his rope and his hand out. No score over just under four. Now you see this bull gives a big-time look to the right, and then when he comes around and jerks him down, pops his hand out of it. Tell you what, it's a good time to have on a helmet. 
We come down to our final ride of the weekend. Dirty to a walk off, he'll finish fifth overall. Luke Snyder is our bad boy mower lead dog. He's got one ride to watch. And it's the man who came into this round with the first pick and the number one spot. Double clutch, Carl Stewart. It is not meant to be Stewart off at 5.9, which means Luke Snyder has won here in Idaho. He's a double winner here at the Idaho Center, winning back in 2008, and once again doing it in 2012. But Ty, give Luke a lot of credit, because this guy went through a buck-off streak that was having him question everything, and obviously he's turned it around. Well, yeah, I mean, it was starting to have me question a lot of things, too. And, you know, Luke understands the mechanics of bull riding so well, and it was fun to watch him execute that today on Charlie Bullwear knowing exactly what he had to do to make it work. Because like you said, that bull had bucked him off three out of four times. He knew exactly what he had to do and, and did it just perfect. Let's take a look at the great moment of the night brought to you by Kawasaki Tear X4. It is Luke Snyder clinching it aboard Charlie Bullwear. Yeah, and the problem guys have with this bull is they get raised up and on the end of their arm, that bull has forward movement. Luke didn't fall for it. He stayed out over his rope, stayed down in the front end, kept reaching forward. You know, you can see the smile on his face. He knows that was a job well done. We take a look at our event results here in Boise. Luke Schneider, his sixth career victory on the Built Ford Tough Series. Mike Lee, a resurgence for the 2004 PBR World Champ. He finishes in second. And once again, another top three performance for LJ Jenkins. He continues a season of consistency, one to remember. Let's send it to Leah with our winner. Idaho has been very, very good to Luke Snyder, especially with Charlie Bullwear, a bull that you know so well. What do you have to do to make it past those couple of moves where it looked like he could have got you? Oh, you're right, Leah. That was two old timers going at it was that what that was. Uh, me and him had a little history together. He's basically been here since I was first on the scene. So uh, he's a little bull that never stops trying at eight seconds. I mean, from one second to eight seconds, he's as hard as he is at the first. And as long as you do the same and give it all you got, things like this happen. <laughs> Craig Hummer up in the booth was uh, commenting on the fact that you're clean shaven today. Did that have anything to do with the win? Oh, you know, all the mustaches are going on right now. I just couldn't pull it off. So uh, I'll tell you what I attribute a lot to it. My fiance, Jen, surprised me and flew in. And I always seem to do good when she shows up. And uh, also on that note, happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Great win. Congratulations. I don't know whether it was the mustache shorty or the fact that you scared him in the Built Ford Tough Invasion, but a fantastic weekend from Luke. You know it was, and the thing that Luke isn't telling you about that bull, that little bull, he'll jump ahead and go back to the right about halfway through it. Luke knows that, and he kind of stayed on the outside of that shoulder up ahead of that bull, and it made that bull stay to the left. Luke pulled a trick on him right there. Ty, they may not have won this weekend, but Valderon, Silvano, and JB showing this is gonna be a fight to the bitter end. I'll tell you what, this is the greatest race we've ever seen for a world championship. It's the deepest, there's a bunch of guys in it, and, and we're looking at a lot of guys that have been second before, and they don't wanna be second again. And I mean, with Valderon getting on with a broken eye socket, JB Mooney getting on with the wrong hand, we're seeing a dogfight like we've never seen. Well, and we all know, don't discount the motivation that Silvano has to be the first ever man to go back-to-back -back PBR World Championships. We take a look at our season points after 18 events. Valderon increases his lead just a little bit. Now 664 ahead of Silvano. LJ moves closer. Now just 750 points behind Valderon. Marchi and JB round out those top five. Well, congratulations go to the Missouri man, Luke Snyder, winning his sixth ever career event here in Boise. Next Saturday, join us back here on the CBS Sports Network at 10 p.m. Eastern as the PBR stampedes into Pueblo. For Leah Garcia, Shorty Gorham, Ty Murray, and our entire crew, I'm Craig Ummer. We'll see you next week.